a sacrifice seduced for the altar of your vanity a jealous hungry god craving praises of profanity with bedroom dark and dine and a deep mouth stained with wine it drinks it's filled it was your mother's much your brothers that agreed to feed you poison this egregious lack of choice indeed seemed fit to join your voice in with lies disguised as prizes of reason and wisdom with briberies of finery to weaken any criticism can the fly invade the blossom that devours it a mouth that lies in wait for a gift of life to shower Okay, everybody, welcome back. It is uh, time for session 85. Uh, next week, first weekend of February, is going to be our three-year anniversary. Um, I haven't heard too much from you guys about if you wanted to do anything special, if your characters have any goals you want to try to hit, anything like that. So shoot me a message if you do. Um, but in the meantime... Uh, we have advanced forward approximately nine years. It is 91 BC. Uh, at this time, uh, Lucius Cornelius Sulla Felix, uh, sometimes just known as Felix Sulla. Uh, by the way, Felix means like fated or lucky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he is a private citizen and, um, He's not a senator, but he sits in the Senate because he is a uh, uh, pro praetor and uh, he hasn't been made consul yet, but he's getting there. Um, along the same lines, Gaius Marius is in town. Gaius Marius uh, revolutionized the Roman army. He is extremely famous. Um, extremely well respected. Uh, if you have a lot of political connections, you know that uh, Marius is highly feared. A great number of senators believe he has accumulated too much power. Uh, on a more personal level, you've noticed that ever since you've left Athens, um, Labienna has been growing steadily colder and more distant from her humanity. Um, even the cult members have noticed it. Interesting. Yeah. Did, did she get more corpse-like as well? Um, no, she's pretty much as corpse-like as she's going to get. Uh, and if, if you look at her in good light, she looks like a walking corpse. Uh, just like every other Cappadocian. In really dim light, a uh, nice robe hiding it or something with her mask on. Okay, she looks like somebody wearing a mask. Presentable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people, of course, give her extremely odd looks because of her two flaws and the mask. So she does attract attention, but not because, oh my god, it's a walking corpse. Just because she looks a bit odd. Yeah, that that <laughs> eerie presence, the, uh, she's just got, there's something about her where, even today, she gives you guys the heebie jeebies when she walks past you. She's the creepy lady. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> it is March 31st. Uh, the Veneralia is tomorrow night. Well, actually, all day tomorrow. Uh, the three priestesses of the group have been putting together a, uh, their annual ceremony for the holiday. And Decius is plotting a pre-holiday pre celebration, uh, trying to drum up some public interest in your cult. Um, On large scale. Yep. So, Decius, um, it is time to make a Charisma Plus Influence roll, and how many 
temporary resource points are you spending on this? Just give me one more time to open my speech. Okay. Uh, Charisma Influence, I'm going to spend... Um, I have a question. Uh, would I be able to spend willpower for this roll? No. Okay, then I'm going to spend three temporary resource. Okay. Now, this is uh, just to get people to show up, all right? So, over the previous week to ten days, as you have traversed throughout the city, um, you guys have noticed that there have been um, newsreaders uh, talking about this upcoming party. There have been some graffiti on the walls uh, in public places, um, some public uh, postings about it for those a few citizens who can read, uh, percentage-wise, of course. Um, so he's uh, spent quite a lot of money and effort trying to get the word out that he is having a big party and a celebration. So let's go ahead and make that roll. Difficulty 6, charisma plus influence. Yes, I rolled one success, so that's four success with the resources. Okay, all right. So yeah, that's why that's why I used uh, three resources. I don't trust my luck. Yeah. So uh, Decius, you are on your way to the uh, small piazza, the small plaza, where you have arranged for this party. You arrive. The area is crowded. Um, some are there, attracted by the smell of food, maybe the preparations. Uh, they've been drawn there by the news criers posting and the artwork. Somewhere between eighty and a hundred people, you would guess. Um, Be right back. Yep. Yeah, the people there are feasting. They're drinking, partying. Musicians are playing. Uh, some of them have just showed up to uh, play, trying to go home with a hopefully a purse full of sestares. There's a wooden rostrum that's been hastily constructed for you. So when you're ready to begin the speech, uh, you notice there is a lasombra there. The lasombra who has helped you craft the speech you're about to deliver. Beautiful woman. Uh, Ancona Messalania. She is there to cash in on the deal that you made. Yes. She circulates. She's beautiful, except for the white splotch of skin on her otherwise well-formed face. The porcelain texture draws the eye away from the rest of her figure. She stalks the crowd, chatting up men and women. You notice there's even a few children running around. Uh, somewhere between 8 and 12 years old. Uh, stealing food off the tables and, uh, you know, just being kids. I, I uh, respectfully nod at uh, La Sombra as, as I lock my gaze with hers. Um, then I take my just, uh, take few seconds of my life to look at the crowd that uh, I've gathered. Uh, not necessarily inhale, but I will still say that I inhale just at a few seconds, embrace the moment, and then um, I will walk towards the stage to begin my speech in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, you, you take a little bit of time, you center yourself, prepare yourself mentally, you climb the uh, rostrum, um, your attendant. Uh, pounds on the boards, uh, shouts out, uh, May I have your attention, your attention, ladies and gentlemen, our host for the evening, uh, Decius, uh, and he shouts out the rest of your name, Decius uh, arrives, yay, everyone cheer, and they all start cheering, clapping, um, they quiet down, ready to hear your speech. Before I do my speech, I will uh, try to use uh, presence one. Okay. Uh, um, that is a Charisma Plus Performance roll at difficulty 7. Yes. Uh, can I spend willpower for this one? Yes, you can. Okay, I will do so. Uh, Charisma Plus Performance, okay. Yeah, it's not going to be good enough. Okay. That's just two success. A few people uh, pay extra attention. 
Okay. Well, that's. I, I I'm gonna stuck with them now. Uh, at least for the power. Uh, nonetheless. Um. So there's a few seconds of silence. Um. This just looks at the crowd as if he gathers their attention. He has this sad demeanor on his face. Um, he seems to be uh, somewhat melancholic as much as what people can tell while looking at him. And then he starts uh, speaking with relatively high volume, but not really shouting either. Uh, my granddaughter, Julia, was a beautiful girl who would love to be with you here. She was a poor girl with a heart as pure as the goddess Flora. Already at a young age, she would love to hear people sing. She would find pleasure in looking at art, and she would love to inhale the freshness of the endless sky and the forests. You see, this just make a certain dramatic gesture to just uh, get the attention I remember the first time she pointed at a statue of a mother and a child she told me how beautiful it was that love the child grew up in Rome she makes another gesture he makes another gesture constricted and ruled over by men, forced away from things she so wholeheartedly desired in her life. She was forced to marry a man and live as an obedient female to give birth to a child and take care of it herself. Such was the chains of men constraining her from just the pleasures that she fled from home. I wasn't there for her when she needed me, but I am here now and trying to do what is necessary. How many of you have families? How many of you have suffered because of men? How many of you imagine the world beyond the house you are put in? There is another moment of silence before this use continues. There are so many beautiful things in this world you never get the chance to experience. Art, music, theater, writing, sexual moments, and philosophy. But today, you choose to be here. That means you already took the first and hardest step. He makes a strong gesture. Today, in this place and together, you have the freedom to express yourselves and your own oppressed desires. Indulge in things that are forced upon you as taboo by men. Defy their authority and taste new pleasures. I wish you all a nice and fun party. May you fully immerse yourselves and find answers to questions man does not want you to ask in this land. And then he makes another strong gesture, then waits for the crowd to react. Okay, it's time for your charisma plus expression uh, roll, um, plus the three extra dice for the help with the speech writing, and I'm going to make this a difficulty of six. Um, do you have like a rhetoric specialty of some kind? Uh, no. Okay, so no applicable specialty then. Just charisma, expression, bonus dice, diff six. Yes. Uh, can I spend the power for this as well? Yes, you can. Can be down to willpower the rest of the session, but that's okay. One, two, three, four successes. All no, right. That's three success. Oh, three. I'm oh, sorry. I thought you spent. Never mind. I can't yeah, do I math today. I did spend willpower. I did spend willpower. I can't. I, uh, I can't math today. All right. Um. Um. You see about thirty people, um, clapping and cheering and. The rest are just kind of looking at you like, um, I thought this was supposed to be about, you know, fidelity and, like, being married and faithfulness. This, this wasn't quite what we expected. 
they're kind of they're kind of dumbstruck by your speech. Yeah. I also assume this role includes the people that's under the effect of awe. Well, it's yeah, definitely help with those few people. Um, yeah, but you get about thirty people who clap and cheer, and um, you see about ten people. Uh, the, if you spend more time there, um, and Kona leads about ten people off with her. Uh, not the ones that you affected, of course, but uh, so of the ones clapping and cheering and, and partying, um, you go, you work the crowd, you talk to them, you tell them to show up at the group Cult Haven uh, to learn more, to to learn more of the um, what they can do and how they can improve themselves and. Uh, change their lives. I leave the stage and just uh, let the priests uh, persuade further these people. Okay. And before you take off for the evening, um, would like you to roll your perception plus awareness. Okay. Oh boy. Well, I just come back to. Um, he just recruited 30 people to go watch your performance. Oh, boy. What's the difficulty? Six. Very nice. Uh, there is a woman watching the uh, crowd. Um, she's not really interacting with anybody. She's just kind of, you know, back in a corner. Um leaning against a pillar, uh, not hurting anybody or anything, just looking. Um, in the brief light that you see, the, the stars and the, the moon shine on her, um, you catch a glimpse, her skin looks waxy and pale. Uh, her eyes are kind of deep set, and they're like big black circles underneath her eyes. Uh, you notice she has not eaten or drunk anything. Uh... If you start making your way towards her, she just gives you a, a polite a nod to, to note that you have recognized her and you see her, and then she fades away. Just kind of backs off and walks away into into Rome. I assume this is not someone I saw before. Correct. You, you don't really know who this is. Okay, I will make a mental note of it and then move on. Yeah, I I think uh, Labiana headships and Albina knows what they are supposed to do. So I don't think this is we'll have to go to them and tell them to you know get in action. But I'm not sure. Uh, no, they know what to do because it's now April first, the Calends of April, the Valeronia, uh, also known as the celebration of Venus Verticordia, Venus the Changer of Hearts. The three priestesses of the group, Albina, Hatshepsut, Labiana, um, awake in the cellar of the group cult building. Uh, on the floor above them, the cult awaits. Uh, there are approximately 30 visitors. Uh, the building is crowded. Uh, there's uh, quite a few uh, among them. Uh, new faces. Uh, new people that have, uh, have come out of curiosity, inspired by the speech of Decius, to see what this is about. I actually looked at the new faces of new, new people, the new fresh people, up in the races on eyebrow. She looks over to the uh, Labiana and to Hatshepsut. with well, uh, silently to ask if what this is about. I believe Decius uh, went to uh, get some extra, draw up some extra visitors. If all goes well, we might have some new converts from this. Uh, and even if not, hope, hopefully we'll at least leave a good impression. Yeah, Labiana looks out over the, the new faces and expresses, as always, 
gives a slight nod. Indeed, he did well. It's coming up towards midnight. You've spent the last couple of hours making the final preps, putting on your costumes, getting your makeup just right, uh, getting your masks, your uh, clothing, um, putting on your jewelry, uh, the few super close retainers and servants um, who are part of the performance have refreshed the lamps, hung the draperies, uh, put the decorations up. I think it's worth noting you have now had this cult for three generations. There are people in this cult, women nursing, who have were born here into the cult and are now bearing the next generation of worshippers. There are nursing women, a couple of men, uh, among your long-term herd. Uh, a few boys running around, a few children running around, uh, so a few old women from the first generation, uh, honored mothers, uh, and of course the uh, women of prime age, age to uh, marry, have kids, uh, who worship here, and their husbands may not necessarily do the same, but they're all eager, awaiting this performance, a performance they see every year, but nonetheless, um, enjoy watching and enjoy participating. Would it be the first time that they would be seeing uh, La Viena's true face? No. Oh. No. Okay. No. But of course they will just presume it's makeup. Right, so you're, uh, you begin the performance. Uh, your own personal restatement and reenacting enactment of the kidnapping uh, dissipator uh, who takes uh, in Greek mythology would be Persephone mm -hmm. uh, uh, Romans call her uh, Proserpina mm -hmm. who would like to uh, talk about their part first you stage the kidnapping you go on stage uh, the few cult members participating, started on their instruments. You begin the speeches, the talk. Uh, each one of you plays a role, uh, actually plays multiple roles as part of the speech. Flipping through mass, putting a hood on and off. Um, you stage the kidnapping. Uh, and who would like to read to speak of their part first? Um, so, um, I only managed to time to get uh, one specific part down, and it's near the end, so I'll let other okay. people take first. I believe it would be fitting if each one of us uh, took the position of one of the gods in the play, and the court members took the positions of Persephina herself. Persephina herself. Perhaps that chef should take the role of Ceres, Abna takes the role of Venus, and Labian takes the role of Dispat. Um, yeah, that can work. Um, okay, from the sounds of it, um, we haven't necessarily all had time to prepare specific, um, specific extract so I will how about I um give the broad the overview the okay go go ahead and then we'll do a couple of performance roles and see how many people you inspire with your vision of this uh, classic tale first okay so the first scene the opening of the uh, performance Dis Dispetta and Proserpina are stuck on opposite sides of the scene. Um, let's say a field with a field with a symbolic barrier between them. Um, both both clearly both clearly um, in love with 
smitten with one another, but Sela is ever protective of her daughter, refuses to let Dispata go, Dispata get close. Dispata, forlorn, goes to his, his brother Jupiter for guidance. Jupiter, thinking back to the traditions and the established way of doing things that has been handed down for so long, recommends the, uh, the stage kidnapping. Dispetta, eager to take any chance to make this work, agrees without thinking. The kidnapping occurs. Dispetta and Proserpina are at first over overjoyed to be able to be together at last. It is a truly loving relationship, but Ceres, of course, would have been angry either way, and is especially angry when it looks like Proserpina has been taken against her will. Ceres, Ceres begins to scour the fertility of the land, threatening to starve the whole world. Her daughter is not returned to her. Eventually, the gods are all forced to the meeting to a meeting. It is not a productive affair. Constant arguments between all are had, uh, it, and they only get more heated when Proserpina reveals that she has already gotten with child from this better. Eventually. Eventually, as it, it seems like it's all set to go to completely tear itself apart, the land to be destroyed forevermore. But Venus intervenes. She, with the sort of chastising love that only a parent can truly bear parent or a parental figure, she reprimands every one, every one of the gods to some small measure. She reminds Ceres that her daughter is her own woman and that she must be allowed to make her own, her own choices and cannot be protected forever. She reminds Jupiter, that the laws and norms that have been established around courtship are meant to serve as guides for the core emotions, and that, and that to let it be the other way around almost, as to bend the uh, proper emotions that everyone is holding to the norms, is to completely miss the point and to, in a sense, corrupt it. And to Dispata and Proserpina, she simply notes that though their love is pure and genuine, they should have taken more care in their, in their actions. Not that they should have given up, by no means, but that they should have considered things more carefully. In the end, she recommends the famous, the famous split that Proserpina will spend half the year above ground with her mother and half the year below ground with, with her husband. Ceres is not truly happy with this and thus, the six, and thus the time of winter is around, but she is willing to accept it. And so, ultimately, balance is restored in a sense. It ends with a simple speech outlining the themes established. Love and, and partnerships of love are, are at their purest when based on mutual affection and the need to bring forth new life stronger than that which came before. The traditions and laws built up by society can can sometimes be, be a necessity to ensure that thing that in in their haste lovers do not tear everything apart, 
but they must always come second. They are a necessary evil, but that does not mean they are not, e in a sense, evil. They must be challenged and re-examined regularly. Okay, so what I need from you guys, um, the three of you together, I need each of you to give me, uh, we're going to roll, this is going to be an act we're going to say has been broken up via Roman terms uh, into four acts. So you're going to each roll four times. You can spend up to f one willpower each roll. It's going to be um, charisma and performance. Uh, the difficulty is eight for all three of you. Uh, Albina and Hatchips is it because you guys are not on humanity anymore. And it, it is showing. It shows. You, you don't have that blush of life and health. You don't have, you don't move the same way humans move. You don't blink, breathe, have the same rhythms. Um, Labiana, Labiana, you are so far removed from what it means to be human anymore, almost. Not quite as far as, as Albina and the Labia and Hatchepsit, but you're getting there. And of course your own particular eerie presence that just puts everybody off. So four rolls from each of you, difficulty eight. You can spend a willpower on each roll. Even the blush of health married? Um, even that, because it's, uh, you are wearing makeup and put on masks and clothes and stuff like that, so, um, such things, uh, while you're not quite as pale and nasty as Hatchepsit, uh, it still comes through in the way you blink and your rhythms and the way you breathe. It, it, it hides some of the more overt physical signs, but not necessarily some of the tics, that's the same right. And it's... It, the people in the crowd aren't going to look and say, that person didn't blink. But they're going to notice it. Even if they can't put their finger on why it made them uncomfortable. Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Um. Is, w wouldn't they be wearing masks anyway? On, at times. Masks on sometimes. Makeup at sometimes. Um, wigs. This and I that. So, pretty yeah. much standard at this time of uh, theater, so it means they would not notice blinking anyway. No, well, at times. Like, but there's other things as well. Like I said, the way they walk, the way they talk. Um, and after a particularly strenuous dance, you know, they're not breathing heavy. So such things all kind of add up. Individually, you're not going to be like. Eh, it, you can brush one of these things off, but as a whole, the, it just everyone sort of notices. But like I said, it's not something they can go, "Oh my God, that that person just isn't breathing hard after that huge dance. They're supernatural." But there's something in the back of their head says, "That's not normal. I don't like this." All right. So. Okay. Uh... I was just about to say, how are we going to do this? Are we going to have um, all of us roll sort of one act at a time? Yes. Or one person I, rolls all four? I would, would like each four. of you to roll um, one act at a time. I'm rolling my first one. Yep. I'm not going to use a willpower on this one. Let's see how we go. Here's a question. Can we add anything to presence? Yes, you can. Oh. If you want to activate all, you may do so, and that would definitely help you. Uh, should, should, uh, should, should I should we, have thought about that. Should we make a separate roll for the all first, or just... Make, make a single roll for all, and it is effective for the entire performance. Okay. So, let's ignore that first roll. Unless, uh, if you want to ignore that first roll, we will. Let's roll your presence. Uh, holy shit. Ash is you affect everyone in the audience. Um, you may add extra dice equal to your presence rating. 
Nice. What do the rest of us need to worry about? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, for Hashipset, um, Hashipset is particularly captivating. It even affects you guys, by the way. She is particularly captivating and enthralling. Um, she's on her A game um, tonight. Just like she's never been better. I am actually looking for a set number of successes to have a successful performance. And each amount of successes over that is people you have recruited. And maybe spend XP for to add to your group herd. Now, I've just realized something. I think I meant to have like a plus two difficulty uh, because of my clan weakness as well. Um, that's why. I, that's part I of what I've included for the you're yeah. at diff eight. Plus, plus, okay. plus, given this is a stage thing, we probably had time to not fully but somewhat work around it by yeah. giving you roles where that appearance would fit. Exactly. And like... When you appear as this painter in all of your terrible glory, the, the mask off, hood thrown back, full appearance, everyone gasps in fear, you know, and it's like, oh my god, and what a performance, what a makeup job. Let's hope you don't botch that yeah. particular role. <laughs> oh, no. But, um, okay, I'm going to do my all roll now. So we're going to make that diff 8 as well? It's diff 7. It's normally diff 7. That, it is, yeah. that is a book, that is a so book roll, diff 7. Uh, I'll try not... I won't spend a willpower on this one either. Two. Um... I will allow you uh, to ignore a single one on a roll, but you have to tell me which roll you're going to use it on before you roll it. Okay. Uh. And that's specifically for Labiana's partial success, right? Correct. She doesn't affect everybody, so... At some point, she's going to get in a, a one on one of these four rolls. I know she is. And I'm going to allow her to gamble and say, I'm going to ignore a one on this roll before she makes a roll. Okay. So now I believe we're all up to Act 2. All right. If I'm not mistaken. Well, did you want to keep your single success on the first Act roll? Or uh, did you want to re-roll it with all? Well, actually... I could use it for that first roll. Okay. I mean, um, which gives me a two successes. All right. Well, tell you what, we'll go oh, ahead and do right. that. Where are we? All right. We are starting the second act. I am looking for ten total successes between the three of you for a good for a satisfactory performance that will satisfy all of the visitors. And this is across the whole thing, or specifically each act? Across the whole thing. Okay, so Everything in excess of that means more and more people are impressed and would like to join your cult. So I think right now we're at four total. Yes, you're at four. Act two. So this one, I think I will add a willpower to. Willpower. All right, you are at eleven successes. Um, the whole gr the whole crowd is really getting into it. Um, Albina? That's okay. No right, one. So, though. 12. Oh. Awesome. Um, you guys are doing great. We have two more acts to go. You notice the crowd's really getting into it. Um, your cult, everyone's at least appreciating it, and several people are getting enthusiastic, um, to use that word. We're on act three. 
Um, that isn't a bot, so... Alright. Well, I think that pretty much counteracted that, so... No, <laughs> well... No extra successes that 13, act. So 13, we're up to 14. Um, act 4. This one I will use a willpower on as well. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Are, are we done with power for the rest of the session, or? Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna hurt, but that's okay. I don't plan on combat unless you guys do something like to force it. <laughs> I, I punch the prince in the face. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that would be a combat situation. That would be right. you just die. All right, you yeah. you have yeah. <laughs> nineteen total successes through the performance. That is enough we that the vast majority of people there are highly impressed uh, with your performance. They are inspired. Um, they clap. They cheer. Congratulate you. Um, it's a wonderful performance. Um, you may grow your group cult by spending XP to bring your herd up to four. And I could. Available. I have five. I, can we contribute that together? Yes, you can pull it all together. Um, I've got one to put in, uh, three. So uh, I think that's seven so far between the three of us. Yes. Let me was one up. Let's see what your group cult's looking like. I think you guys need four plus uh, six experience, so. What is 4 plus 6? 10. Yeah, I think you guys need 10 XP to go from her 2 to her 4. Alright, well, it's, uh, I'm gonna, you, you've been making some effort through the uh, years to, you've almost made it to her 3 anyways. So if you can give me to um, 8 XP, if you can make it to 8, I'll give you her 4. No, we cannot make it great. We can wait for this. Wait, D Decius Vopal, either of you fancy throwing one in? I can do it, no problem. Okay. There you go. You are now at a herd rating of four. You have. Today's uh, ceremony has massively grown your herd. They th essentially throw themselves at you, and you take the opportunity um, over the coming months to solidify your hold over them and they move into the building with their families and you now have a four point group cult herd excellent good job guys god the amount of blood i must be able to get through that ritual now <laughs> um when you are ready to spend experience points uh you can raise the group cult resources to two And that is that be, yeah. spending. but that that's uh reflects the uh, donations that your herd is making towards the group coffers that would be two more experience points we should be able to get that by the end of the session yep and just that's just whenever you're ready to do it doesn't have to be right away yeah, so long as, pres presumably, so long as we don't wait for, like, an entire millennium. <laughs> okay, um... Alright. I'm gonna rewind one night. Back to March 31st. Uh, Nicodemus, you are in your haven. Um, the old Salubri Trading Hall. Over the years, it started to molder, um because you've never managed to fix the resources that were taken from you. So you haven't been able to keep it up quite so well. Um, parts of the uh, roof are beginning to cave in. The wood is moldy. Um, 
Uh, the floor, it hasn't been oiled or set down properly uh, in a while. It's warped real bad. There's parts of it are sagging. Um, most, most of your resources have been tied up in your uh, uh, Collegium Medicum or the uh, uh, Medicine Guild. Uh, I would think you've probably moved some of your collection of uh, knowledge over to the guild because that is actually quite well funded and uh, the building's in very good shape. But that's a worry for another night. As tonight, um, as you have come awake and uh, prepared yourself, there is a pounding on your door. I'm talking bam, 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 bam. Well, let's see who it is. I assume we have some servants to answer this call. I, I would think you probably do. Um, they open the door. There's a group of men outside with a small wagon. Uh, the shipping master is a very large man, thick arms, thick legs, um, sitting on the wagon. He's got a uh, whip. And the man knocking on the uh, door in a terrible dockside immigrant Latin uh, asks you, um, is this the home of Nicodemus the Theban? Um, I assume I am there. I'm probably looking in the shadows using Obfuscate. <laughs> Just in case. Probably, yeah. mm -hmm. I see no reason why the servant wouldn't say otherwise. Okay. He says uh, the guy um, makes a gesture and uh, a couple of men jump off the wagon and begin grabbing crates of stuff and begin hauling it up to the door. Um, it's crates of papyrus and a few thick um, volumes of leather. Um, these are the Arshak diaries that I sent you. Uh, and the man says, uh, uh, this arrive for you taxes paid. Uh, would you stamp this? And he holds out a document to the servant or whoever's at the door. Um, he's asking for a stamp showing that you have received it. Uh, does it seem like there's any sort of... Uh, nope, it's uh, perfectly 100% standard. You've seen this hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, okay. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be stamped accordingly. Okay. Thank you for a customer of Bolacum. Good night. And they go back to the wagon, leaving you with crates and crates of stuff. They hop on the wagon and drive away. So is that like courier service or something? Yep, it is, uh, was a paid service to deliver it from uh, the region where it came from all the way to here. Everything checks out, everything is wax sealed. Um, And you are know that they, they will eventually send all of this paperwork back uh, to show that it was received. It will actually, it will probably take about a year to get there. <laughs> Amazing how time passes. Uh, very well. I suppose Nicodemus would spend a, uh, a appropriate amount of time to study and catalog all these findings and and diaries. Right. Um, as stated, as uh, you received when I sent it to you, um, there are a couple of volumes that have are essentially tied shut with twine, and they are specifically called out as. The man who sent them to you has said he would not touch these or open them. Um, he has no idea what's in them uh, because there was when he went to touch them, uh, he received extremely negative premonitions and realized that there's probably something in here that might explain your sire's condition. But he was not going to open it and find out. Um, Nicodemus would address them with the proper care. Um, 
not touching upon them unless uh, his mental condition was uh, appropriate for this kind of challenge. Uh, perhaps some sort of meditation or a ritual of cleansing uh, would be fitting to prefer, prefer, prepare oneself for this kind of uh, trial. Right, yeah, you can spend um, quite a bit of time tonight uh, looking through them, uh, cataloging them, uh, picking out what you want to keep here, what you want to send to your other domain, um, and how you want to hide these things. Uh, if you want to put them in bags or boxes, uh, how you wish to keep them from... Are you okay with skin contact? Do you want to pack it in clay? There's all these decisions you get to make and um, do. All right, we will fast forward to April 2nd. You have spent a couple of nights um, cataloging, arranging these things, reading the stuff that's safe to read, um, the letters, uh, the uh, actual diary entries, the uh, prophetic words that were written down. You've spent some time digesting them, um, thinking on their meanings. You, uh, there is April 2nd, approximately two to three hours after sunset. Um, there is a, a knocking on your door. This one is uh, considerably more polite. It is a servant of Fawzia. Uh, he uh, tells, you, yep, tells you that uh, uh, Mr. Nicodemus, uh, Mr. Sfazia, uh would like uh, your help. Um, you and your um, child of uh, Gregorius. Hmm. Is it a, 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 media, a, um, a request with uh, immediate time, time stamp? She told me to come and she told me to come and get you. I did not question or ask for time frames. Oh yes, oh, so typical. Uh, very well. We shall prepare ourselves and um, leave as soon as we can. Just wait a moment, please. Now I've no idea if Gregor. I cannot remember if Gregorius ever came into contact with Fazia. Probably. It's been several years. Um, um, I could definitely see that you I, probably introduced him. And I assume he already is acquainted with her particular way of doing things. and that Acquainted and result. disgusted, but yes. <laughs> Which is a very, way, very good way to put it, but um, there is a... Uh, generally, I don't want him to freak out or do any kind of random things while in her presence. So I assume we have a brief talk about what to expect and what kind of weird things she can put in our way. All the same, it's a pathway to learning. Yeah, he says, uh, he says, uh, in line. he says, uh, I'm thinking Damus, um, I know you have affection for her in your heart, but she's a monster. Not just the side of her, her methods, her living arrangement, um, the stuff that she does, it makes me physically ill to, to, to even think about. I cannot say I blame you. Uh, there's this there's this curse to our kind that those who um, seek to preserve humanity in their hearts and souls must be subjected to the whims of the monsters that choose otherwise. And Fazia just, just plays into the monster part. Her pursuit of death at the cost of everything is, is, what, is, is, is what disturbs me because she 
she fails to understand the basic principle that without without life there is no death and just seeing death without context is birth of meaning and so she is monstrous as she is the should i take it that you vehemently do not wish to participate in this journey well i don't know what she wants you for but i have a, a sense that whatever she's doing is going to put people's is going to hurt people and I don't know if I'll be able to stop myself from trying to stop her. Hmm. What did the servant say? Was it specifically me uh, and Nicodemus and his child? She needs your medical expertise. Well, think of it about this way. She already put her plans in motion, right? So whatever gruesome and uh, dastardly things she has committed, it's out of our uh, out of our influence. However, by being there, we can influence her to somehow diminish the effect of her wrongdoing upon others. I mean, if you say so, but. Honestly, um, I, I'm not a violent person, but l let's just hope and pray that uh, when we get there, it's not something that I just have to intervene in. Mm. Um. Eventually, dear Gregorius, you have to understand that we are cursed to be subjected to such horrific wrongdoings. Um, I appreciate I appreciate your proclivities towards and your aversion to it. And rest your assured, I am averse to it as well. But I've learned to see the other side, as it were. That doesn't mean I am accepting. Of course not, but um, there is a certain level of maneuverability that we need to um, we need to embrace to uh, avoid complete madness. That say, let's strike up a deal. We'll go there and see what she wants. If you feel uncomfortable, um, just make up any excuse. I'll vouch for you and. And uh, if you wish to depart, I'll I'll just I'll just cover your back, and stay with her to to attend her whatever she has planned for tonight. I guess that's going to have to do. Uh, I'll do my best not to disappoint you. Um, her haven is uh, near the Tiber River. It's carved into the side of a hill. Um, there's a shack over the top of it, a couple of people living in it. Uh, inside the shack, you see it's stuffed full of food, um, bread, some meat, uh, vegetables. Some of it is getting moldy. Uh, the roof leaks, it sags. Uh, there's a cupboard, and behind the warped cupboard wall is a very strong door. Um, you open the door, and uh, it reveals a cave with four chambers. Uh, the cave itself, the walls are damp. You can see the humidity, the moisture beating on the walls. Uh, you can smell algae and mold. Uh, it's, it's chilly in here, kind of kind of cold. Uh, a couple of candles and stuff burn to provide light. In the uh, deepest chamber, um, water sometimes rises from the porous stone and makes a pool about a centimeter deep. Uh, the other three chambers have dead bodies stuffed in them in various stages of decay and some wax cylinders. 
Uh, there's some clay uh, amphorae sitting on crude tables stuffed with more cylinders or sealed shut with clay. Uh, in this environment, paper will not last very long. Everything needs to be painted or written on wax and clay or stamped in copper. You make your way towards the deepest cave and you see a boy of about 12 who has been tied up securely to a hook driven into the wall. Um, well then! Fawzia is there talking to the boy. He's crying. I'm, I'm so hungry. Please, please take me back to mom and dad. Please, I'm, I'm so hungry. I'll be good. I promise. And she stands up and her mask is off. Face, everything's completely exposed. And uh, she says, oh, in, in her nice, happy, cheerful, chirp, chir uh, chipper way, Oh, Nicodemus, I'm so happy to see you. Please, come in. Welcome, welcome. And she walks over, and she just strides over, full of energy, and she gives you a big hug. And she says, and you brought your dear, darling, precious medical chill to, oh, it's so good of you. I'm, I'm so glad you, you, you did that for me. Please come in. Come in. Let me show you. Well, dear Fazia, it's all... Um, I'm pleased to see you're in good health. I'm in good condition. I'm good spirits. However, and I see that you made yourself busy. Have you changed your study subject? Well, you know, I wasn't having any luck uh, uh, merging the dead organs with uh, living flesh, and Gregorius is, is like gagging. <laughs> Um, she's like, so I've, I've decided to go a little bit different route. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm going to starve this kid to death. <laughs> That's going to prove. I I'm sorry, but I failed to see what, the logic in this. What I want to do is starve him to the very brink of death. And then I'm going to keep feeding them at that point. I want to try to make them hover right on the brink of death, just before they die. I want to see if... I've tried to physically merge the dead and the living. That's not working. So, I want to see if I can take a living person to death and then bring them back and see if they can bring back a portion of the dead with them. And I'll... And out of all the various possibilities, the various, the various dynamics of Rome, the various suffering people, you had to pick a healthy child and, and, and starve him to death in the process. Well, why not? It's a child, which means it's, it's much more hardy. Um, this one is pretty healthy, like you said. Uh, no broken bones, nothing to interfere there. I don't have to worry about... Uh, uh, existing uh, health injuries. Uh, as a child, it's going to have more vigor, more uh, a longer lifespan. I don't have to worry about it maybe dying on me from old age or uh, infirm conditions. Ah, it seems like the perfect, uh, perfect experimental vessel. No, it's not. How can you even think of this? Have you not, have you not l learned the, the, the various dependencies? Look, it's a it's a it's a small boy. His his mental and uh, and emotional responses have not yet fully developed. He's going to break mentally before he even reaches the hunger stage, uh, and 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 you're hoping to get an average balanced response from him. That's ridiculous. Well, it's fine with me because hey, I don't need a healthy mind. I just want the body. But they, but, but they are intricately linked. You'll, you'll get a prematurely degrading mind influencing the state of the, uh, the state of the flesh. And, and in the process, uh, you'll get uh, incompatible results in comparison to the, uh, to the grown up, uh, to the gr grown up specimens. It's going to warp any kind of conclusion you can make. It may, it may even accelerate the process because before you even before you even note the balance. 
Ah, uh, she kneels down and she looks at the kid. She grabs his face and he like jerks backwards, like, "No, please, I'm so sorry, please. I swear I'll, I'll be good. I swear by all the gods, just take me back home." He's like crying. Snot's running up. <laughs> oh my god! He's getting that child snotty face and come on, that's, yeah. Come on, that that's nonsense. And uh, she's like grabbing it's his face and looking at him. She's like, "You know, I've never noticed that with my child. You know, experiments before." But, but, you know, you really think so? You really think that uh, a child can't handle this? Yeah, I really think so. Trust me, I've, we've, we've gotten some kids into Collegia, and they've pretty much broken under stress and uh, under the pain. The, the threshold was so, so little compared to adult humans, and they, they just vaporized. And even if we could have... Uh, brought their flesh back into 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 shape after a particularly traumatizing event their minds never came back we couldn't even get their get their responses back in line they were never the same it's the adult mind that can handle it well i suppose you might be right i'll start with adults and work my way backwards if i can't get the results i want i was going to start with kids and work my way up but I guess I can start with adults and work back and see if I can figure it out. Would you be a darling and fetch me a healthy adult male victim? I mean, sorry, I don't mean that word. A healthy adult male volunteer? Hmm, volunteer. Hmm, I can get a volunteer. Awesome. I'll take no, care of this. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, well, let me handle the kids. I'll just make them... Make it more balanced, and that won't be a problem. No, no, I, I got it. I'll just, I'm just gonna harvest his organs and put my other servants. They need fresh no. ones, anyways. So, yeah, by all means, please. Besides, I don't have dominate to make the kid forget this. So, uh, you know, I've shown the kid my face. I can't just let him go. I, oh, I, I, I can use him or I can kill him. What are you going to do with not fully grown organs? Come on, we've been through this. There's no point in experimenting our children. Well, since you seem so determined to walk out with this kid, I can snap his neck, or I can remove his tongue and his hand so he can't say or write anything. What do you think it's going to happen, Fazia? Considering who you are and who am I, what's going to happen then? I don't think anything's going to happen. I think that uh, eventually you'll walk out my cave door one way or the other, and I will ask for you to return. I'm not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. I'm not like that. You know that. What do you think? What do you think I want? I know what I want, but what do you think I want? I think you want to know what's going to happen. At any price? I know that's what a true scholar would say. A true scholar that is devoid of any kind of attachments or conscience. She gets up and she says, she looks right in your eyes and she says, I think that right now you are trying so hard to suppress the urge to ask me to participate, to study night by night the process of starvation and what's going to happen to the body and the mind. I think right now there's something inside you that's telling you, let her do it. You want to see this. And that's a willpower roll for you at difficulty 8 to not agree with her. Uh, okay, I don't need to make this roll to, to actually give her credit. She speaks the truth. And Nicodemus nods without... Okay, the hesitation is there because he still has his reflexes and his conscience. But he admits... I agree, I am curious. 
but there is some lines that may not be crossed and some thresholds that I am not ready to part with. And I hope I will never make this kind of decision because there is a difference between pursuing knowledge and there is a diff uh, and uh, cannibalizing your own self in order to seek it. I will <laughs> perhaps we can we can return to this very subject to this very moment in a couple of hundred years when I am more deranged than I am right now. But I am not ready to take this step. Please, I will take this kid from you. And how are you going to ensure that he says and remembers nothing of what has happened here tonight? I know the game. I know, I know people who know Dominate can tell him to not speak. If this is your only concern, then it's a Finn concern. Well, if you wish to take that responsibility uh, all upon yourself, uh, you do still need to make that willpower roll, by the way. And it's actually difficulty six. Um, I will allow you to do it. Replace him with a more suitable vessel that uh, further meets your exacting criteria. Take the child, ensure that uh, our traditions are followed, and he says and is able to tell nothing of what's happened here. And I'm confused. May I, what did may, you say about willpower roll? You, you do need to make that willpower roll. That's your clan weakness. Oh, uh, oh, I thought you meant only to agree with her, which I did. Oh, unless you meant uh, to just fully agree with her and just go yeah. go with her business. I, I need you to make your willpower roll at diff six uh, for your clan weakness because uh, your particular weakness, this literally appeals to your medical weakness. You want to see this happen. <laughs> like, you're arguing with yourself right now, like, now, I'll, I'll let you say I'm not going to make the roll, but you're down two dice the rest of the night. Okay, let's roll. All right. Yeah, you're like, uh, you know what? No, this it's not worth it. Um, I'm not walking out of here without that child. And um, uh, you know, Gregorius 100% uh, agrees with you. On that, he he, there, he, he you, you can actually just feel, sense it that he cannot let this happen. Um, she says, "Okay, here you go." She takes the kid with one hand, picks the, the um, kid up, uh, takes him off the hook, sends him to you. He stumbles across the wet, damp stone, uh, bounces off of you. Um, and he, as with his bound hands, he tries to hug onto your leg, crying, "Please get me out of here, please, Mister, please! Oh my God, take me back home to mom and dad." And he's like crying, okay, okay. shaking, holding on to you with all the tightness of a scared child. Nicodemus is going to allow him to be lashed on, just pet his hair, even though it's very awkward for him to do it. The years of Distancing from humans have made this motion stiff and uh, on some level he's unable to empathize with kids especially. Um, um, perhaps in measure to mask his uncertainty, his, uh, he nods to uh, Fozia. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to depart and ensure there's, there's, there's no problem. She just says, "I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll be waiting then, patiently, watching my candles burn down." Mm 
Have a good time then. So Nicodemus leaves. Yep. You guys leave. Gregorius picks the kid up um, in his arms so that you can walk. Uh, it's worth noting that Gregorius' humanity is so high that he still blinks, um, occasionally breathes like a human. Um, his flesh is still soft like a human's. He doesn't have blush of health, but uh, pretty much every, uh, if you really didn't know any better, it, you, you might peg him as a low humanity ghoul rather than a high humanity vampire. Gotcha. He doesn't need blush of health. Uh, okay, I guess the plan is to find someone. Mm. Event true. Uh, perhaps we can find Dennis. If uh, I mean Odysseus, if uh, if he has time, maybe they call the uh, call group domain. Yeah, you know where Decius lives and uh, everything. So, uh, what I do would like you to do is make a D one hundred roll at a. Uh, there's no difficulty, but you want to roll over a 25. Okay. Nobody harasses you or bothers you. Um, you get a couple of weird looks. Somebody carrying a kid through Rome this late at night. Man, what the hell are these two guys doing? But uh, nobody really bugs you. Uh, you skirt around the worst of the neighborhoods. Uh, it takes you about half an hour to walk all the way uh, to Decius's um, villa. Uh, one of his men uh, welcomes you in to the home and uh, goes to fetch him. Uh, Master Decius, oh, Master thanks. Decius, uh, your your friend uh, Nicodemus is here to see you with a uh, young boy. Says he needs you. Of course. <clears throat> Lead me to them. He does so. Oh, Nicodemus. I'm so happy to see you here. Please, come in. Do you want something? A little bit of nourishment, maybe? Uh, Salve, dear sir. Uh, mm. Yes, that would be very, very welcomed. Uh, I am, I am on a, on, a, on, a, on a bit of an urgent business, and I would like you to ask a favor of you. Um, I find us myself in a bit of a predicament, and I would like uh, to ask you to uh, lend me your expertise in uh, in, in, do in dominate. Of course. You are my mem you are a member of my country. You don't need to ask for a favor. I will do this for you. What do you need? Oh, I am most thankful. I need this child to not remember the the current night, and I for I wish to return it for return this this kid to wherever wherever they uh, he lives without uh, knowing what occurred today tonight. But it certainly can be. Uh, it can certainly happen easily. Um, but before I go on to alter his memories, why don't you tell me what he experienced so I can do it uh, with more accuracy, consistency? Uh, GM, just out of curiosity, would Nicodemus know if it's really required? For um, him to know the details? If he, is he making sense? Would this, would this Out of that? character, I think a big, I'm not trying to lie. I think I need to do that out of character, but I'm not well, sure. Well, what he needs is a an exact time frame for how long to. Uh, I'll tell you what. Roll uh, intelligence plus occult. Dominates not mm -hmm. a clan discipline for you, but you've seen it in action before. So let's say difficulty five. Uh, intelligence plus occult. Okay. Yes. Wow, nice. Um, what he needs 
exactly is he needs a time frame to remove to completely remove a memory but if he's going to alter a memory uh, for tonight then he needs more detail so that he can make it more believable so if you just want him to be I don't remember anything period all he needs to know is from sunset to, to whatever um, hmm. but if you, if you want him to believe that he was, uh, kidnapped by somebody for ransom and he got away and you guys picked him up and are getting him back to his parents, then he's going to need more details about what to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all that is required is that, uh, it may potentially involve a masquerade breach. So it's better if he doesn't remember, uh, He's seen some crazy shit, and um, um, I'll I'll give you a specific time frame if you can do it. Um, we can agree that he kind of got lost, uh, perhaps fell asleep because he was so tired after playing ball or something. And uh, I'll actually get back to you in just a moment, and I'll try to squeeze in how long we actually need. Um, to uh, to be removed, and the way Nicodemus speaks is that um, he really tries to mask it, but there is some sort of uh, weird shenanigans and uh, in, involved in this that there are some twitches from his expressions that cannot be uh, suppressed. Perhaps he's a bit ashamed of the whole situation. But on the left, he's like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go talk to the kid and try to extract a precise, precise time frame that we need to remove. Would that be good for you? Of course. Uh, time frame is the only thing I need if you want to remove it. I just thought that you would want me to alter it for a better, how to say it, uh, success uh, for the future. But I can also remove it. Yeah, maybe I was thinking maybe like he wandered into a more uh, more desolate kind of places of Rome, like I don't know, maybe he wandered to near Sabora or something, and um, he then got tired and like. Hmm. Listen, I will, if you do not want to share more information, if you do not want to share the more information, I will alter his memories the way you want me to do it. Just know that I cannot promise if it's going to be persistent. In future, when he tries to recall these things, or if someone tries to make him recall these things, the weaker the altered memory is, easier it will be to break. And if this thing he experienced is a big threat to masquerade, then you would understand how dangerous it will be for you and your, well, yeah, yeah, I, mm, I know how it works. Um, I'll see, I'll actually see what I can learn from him. Maybe this will give me some angle. Uh, do you have a place where we can talk in private with him? This is all you need. Come inside. We will speak in one of my uh, rooms. You don't need to worry about people hearing you here. Oh, excellent. I am most thankful. So, um, I will. I will send. Uh, I will send uh, Lucius with you to help you in case the kid tries to run away. Uh, I will. I will call yeah. for Lucius uh, for him to come uh, from his room. Essentially. So yeah. So this kid shows no signs of trying to run away. He is holding on to Gregorius, like I, he doesn't want to let go. Um, it's actually you're gonna have to pry him off of Gregorius to sit him down. Uh, a couple of your servants they bring in some uh, a, a tiny small bit of wine. Uh, some milk for the kid, uh, a little bit of cheese, some bread, a little bit, just a little bit of food for him. 
uh, a couple of figs, and a uh, kid starts stuffing his face with it, eating. Um, so, uh, Nicodemus, are you going to go uh, soft touch or hard touch here, talking to the kid? Let's start with a soft touch. We want okay. to learn when the when this exactly started and when was the start of this um, thing that we want to remove and what was he doing before that happened. Okay, uh, give me a manipulation and empathy roll. Let's toss in some willpower into this. Five awesome. Uh, yeah, so the kid uh, calms down and he's answering your questions. Uh, he says he was at a party with his parents and um, he got separated from them. Uh, it was actually a couple of hours before dawn the previous day and he woke up uh, being carried away by a man and uh, was tied up in the cave and he hasn't eaten all day long and he didn't see this girl uh, this monster until um, tonight so he's basically been tied up in that cave all day long with nothing to eat or drink Is it a convincing lie to just remove the uh, to just remove the monstrous part and blame it all on some rogue slavers? Yeah, uh, they'd probably get away with that. You gotta throw in something about how the kid got free, and you'll be good to go. Uh, could be that some rival faction freed the slaves to ruin this man's uh, uh, income. So basically, uh, what he saw. I, I it's, yes, it's, keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just talking about the grander things. It's just that, like, some some person uh, opened the cages and all the slaves got free, and there was some real havoc. So the kid ran and just got on the street. And then we ran them, uh, well, not us. And then he he kind of got stumbled onto onto the place that we're going to put him in. That makes sense? Yeah, he ran into a couple of strangers, because he doesn't even know your names. You can erase the names, and um, you guys mm -hmm. were kind enough, the strangers were kind enough to uh, bring him back. Yeah. We 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 ask him where we ask him where he lives and where he needs to be put put to for his uh, parents to find him and yeah that's the scenario. Okay, um, I will do that. Um, okay. Too much. Uh, yep. What uh, he plans to do. I already made the roll for you. Um, the memory you implant is of a uh, man kidnapping him, tying him up uh, in a dark area with uh, a couple of other people and somebody, there's a sound of violence and somebody um, opened the doors and everybody ran and he ran out onto the street and ran into some strangers um, who fed him and brought him home. Yeah, that sounds good enough for me. All right. Um, you question him after you implant the memories, and it seems like they took pretty well. Okay. Uh, and uh, you have done the dominate. You've done this many times. You know how to remove the the stuff afterwards. He's not going to remember you guys. He's not going to remember the questioning afterwards. You've done this a lot. You know how to cover your tracks. Once, I guess, once it is done, I will look at Kodemos and ask him if he wants me. You want me to help in any other, any other, 
any another way Podemos? Well, oh. we are here. You you've helped me more than more than just uh, you you you've helped me a lot right now, and I don't think there's uh, anything more. But uh, if you need a uh, help in any matter of yours, uh, uh, I'll be glad to help you. If, uh, if, if any this day is, I this is will put his hand on Nicodemus's shoulder and say, listen. It's really nothing. I helped you because you are part of the Putri. This is simply a gesture of our loyalty to each other. Do you want some nourishment before you leave? Uh, myself, uh, no, 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 not particularly. But we're very glad for the hospitality. Um, I. Uh... Glory to your house and peace to your home. Ah, kind words. I wish the same for you. Well, let me lead you to the door. Excellent. All right. Anyway, how... You successfully dropped uh, the child off. Um, You uh, do still have to find somebody to replace him, but uh, you can do that via buying a slave or what have you, or just you know getting somebody off the street that you think would be dumb enough to uh, volunteer for this. We'll consider it without uh, Gregorius and in vicinity. All right. She didn't exactly give us a time frame, did she? Well, it was pretty clear that she expects it soon. Hmm. Soon is a vague term when it comes to Kindred. Yeah, pretty vague, but, uh, you know, she doesn't expect you to have one in your back pocket. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. I, if I had left myself undeafened, I would have ruined that whole thing. How so? I wouldn't have been able to stop laughing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's like fledgling vampire time. Uh, okay, so I guess the plan is to consider this angle without uh, Gregorius knowing about it, so we'll probably let it rest and uh, part ways. Um, let's see, uh, uh, what's the condition of Rome in general? Are there people that, are there any people dying on the streets um, already from misnourishment? There are many people. Um, they're not, nobody's starving to death, but there's plenty of people that are on the verge of it. Um, bread is, uh, decently cheap. Um, it is at a consistent price, which helps. The, uh, uh, rest of the goods and services, uh, do fluctuate in price, of course. Um, it's, like I said, it's enough to keep people from starving to death, but it's a, it's a uncomfortable existence for those on the lowest, um, rungs of society. Uh, especially if they can't get a job and, and don't have enough money. Um, there's plenty of uh, diseases. Uh, plenty of people who spend all day and all night coughing and hacking. Um, Gregorius will uh, talk to you about how he has seen many people um, over the years coming in with black um, lesions, uh, pustules inside of their lungs. Uh, that's why a lot of people are coughing because they're infected with this um, whatever tumor is growing in their lungs, whatever humor imbalance is, is uh, affecting their lungs and their ability to breathe. Um, malaria uh, still comes and goes in waves. Uh, your common cold, of course, is a, is a thing. And along with uh, several other standard various diseases 
the pox, the um, syphilis, all, all that kind of stuff is nothing's nothing's changed there. The occasional outbreak of leprosy. Uh, of note, societal unrest is extremely high. It's amazing what you can get used to. Um, starting around the time of uh, Gaius Gracchus and continuing to today, so for almost 50 years now, there's been talk of granting all of the uh, people up and down the Italia Peninsula a Roman citizenship status. And every time it's brought up, somebody dies. And the riots have just been getting worse and worse and worse. And so societal unrest is really, really high. People disappear off the streets all the time, every single night. And it's assumed that they're fallen victim to thieves or this violence. What about people who are incarcerated? That's funny that you should mention that. There's actually very, there's like four jails in Rome, but I don't want you to envision a modern jail. When we say jail, it's really a pit in the ground, and there's four walls built up so that people can't escape, and there's some guards on the walls, and they will occasionally throw chunks of meat and lower buckets of soup down into the pit um, to keep the prisoners alive. Uh, but there's actually very few prisoners as such inside the, each prison. And there's no individual cells. It's all one big holding area. Um, what is, what's usually the fate of such characters? Is These are other... people who have typically offended somebody with a lot of money, who can afford... Uh, essentially a team of bounty hunters to go find them and drag them to this prison and throw them in. And they're okay. going to go to trial, and if they're in prison, they're most likely going to get convicted. And convicted to what? A fine or... Hard labor or death. Or... Hard labor mm -hmm. or death. Those are your two sentences. Usually. Well, so while Nicodemus is chewing on that, let's uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Um, you guys all get together with uh, Nicodemus still considering his options. How is he going to find a replacement, convince somebody, you know, what have you. And... Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. You know what, I, let's take a short break at this point in time. Um, I find I need some tea in me. Uh, let's come back in like 10 minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, you guys, uh, as Nicodemus ponders his predicament, uh, everybody, everybody gathers back at the uh, group haven to discuss uh, nightly business and um, things and such. Uh, Decius and uh, Nicodemus, you notice there's uh, several new faces amongst the herd members. Uh, so that's another night, sorry. That's another night, or... This would be April 2nd. Yeah, April 2nd. Uh, I've lost my timeline, so this is the same night, or... Yes, uh, same or... night, same night. You've dropped the kid uh, off. You are just thinking of your options. Okay, that that's good. Okay. New faces. Yep. Um, you guys meet in the uh, group haven and are discussing uh, your options and and 
maybe getting their input on what has gone down. Uh, so I will let you guys take it from there. This is will say once he settles in, he will ask, uh, not say, he will ask, uh, are these the people from the party? Quite a few of them, yes. Ah, oh, beautiful. It makes me happy to see that it, after all, was a successful endeavor. From what um, Akshep told us, you were involved in the presence in the celebration. We thank you for it. It's really nothing. I knew, I saw that there was an opportunity for your cult to grow and as a part of this country, I had to take uh, my fair share of um, interest in its well being. Um, it was really nothing. It makes me happy to see that it was successful and you had to, uh, you had a chance to increase your size. Is it, is it uh, at a good point now? Are you satisfied with this upgrade? I'll be in a, um, once again looking her usual uh, expressionless and emotionless state. Uh, looks over at uh, Deuceus um, and says, actually, I'm very impressed at uh, that you managed to persuade this many people to uh, you know, come and see us in order to be swayed further. Thank you. Sadly, I impressed less than anticipated amount of people. Um, if you if you were in the party, you would see that there were there were hundreds of them. But sadly, not all of, of not all of them was interested in uh, the opportunity this cult offered. But uh, you managed to persuade enough of them, and that is your success. And that is, after all, all that we needed. But this also brings another thing that I want to discuss while we are together. Because there's another thing, another opportunity I see, or I should say, opportunity to upgrade. Listen, do you remember the few years ago how your former country member burned to ash? How his villa raised in a matter of night his memory is gone the great fire you remember the event that is niche yes yeah it's just a, a shame really i could there were some other things i've been i've been interested to learn from him but such as well on life not life well that fire took if I recall correct, one fourth, or was it one third of Rome? Either case, it destroyed enough havens, enough kindreds, enough humans in Rome that I would say that it had a good impact, especially on the patricians, or not even patricians, especially on the people with resources to prevent something like that ever happening again uh, on themselves. I am one of those patricians. The technology we have at this year, at this era, it allows us to build houses from stone. And it's pretty much the best we can do against our homes burning again once more. There's nothing more than 
that we can do if supernatural means are not introduced to the equation. It saddens me to know that none of you have the resources to do that for yourselves, to build your havens out of stone so that if such a fire happens again in future, you will be able to protect yourselves. But the good thing is I am here. I am part of this group and I'm a Ventru. And that means I have duties I need to fulfill. Duties I do because it is in your best interest as well as mine. I'm making an offer here and do not, under, uh, do not misunderstand me. This offer I'm making, there is no cost to it. I do not expect anything, really. I will provide the resources required for each one of you to rebuild your havens from stone. So that in future, if another great fire comes forth and burns through our lovely city, you will at least be sleeping covered by protection I provided. You are, of course, free to not accept that, but that would be foolish, as I said. I'm doing this because you are part of the coterie, part of my coterie. And I do not expect you to do anything in return either. This is simply a help I provide. You do not need to answer now if you think about de declining my offer. Take your time, think about it. I'm waiting and I will be here. We will, of course, let you know. The offer is certainly appreciated, whatever else is said. Most generous, in fact. But there are, of course, some dynamics attached to it, which may be difficult to overcome. But nonetheless, uh, rest assured, it is indeed very appreciated. And um, should I come to the conclusion now, I'll speak to you. As I said, please take your time, think about it. I told you already that I'm doing this for what reasons? It's as honest as it gets. I believe uh, she look, Abner looks over to the after. I believe it's something that if there is no strings attached, might be beneficial and should be accepted. Yes. So mm. do, you, do you say that out loud? Yes. So you're saying that out loud, looking at the rest of the group. Uh, this use will immediately answer after you say that to the group. Yes. There is nothing attached to it. There is no conditions. There is nothing I ask of you. There's no favors in question. You're not, you need to understand I am doing this. As I said it before many times, I'm doing this because you are part of this country. And that means we have a certain connection to each other now, certain duties we need to fulfill. I am doing my own part, duties given to me not by a choice, but by a greater authority. Perhaps we can start with rebuilding the group haven. Because Certainly, we can do that. I'm sure with the new addition to your herd, you will need a bigger building uh, to contain them. A little bit of space will be good for everyone. 
and this time we can uh, create more inner protections against any chance of uh, attack. Well, hold on. We cannot change our location. It needs to stay where it is. Is it possible to rebuild, like, gradually? Like, we start with this half and then the other half to not compromise the daily, uh, the daily uh, conduct? The situation is that building a stone house, it takes a quite amount of money and time. And for me to do this for all of you, it will require that I focus on the time instead of the money. So it will take some time to build each one of your havens uh, from scratch as stones. It will mean that in that time frame, you will need to find another place to stay safely. But I already know this risk and what it means to you. So I already have a solution for that. For the time frame that I am rebuilding your haven from scratch, I will provide you a secure place in my own haven so that you won't worry about the sunlight or fire or pretty much anything else that might be a danger to you in the daytime. Mm -hmm. I will have to do this individually for each one of you, so it might take uh, several decades before everyone has a haven uh, that is made from stone, but eventually it will be done. And once it is done, I'm sure you will understand the, how to say it, importance of it if another great fire starts. Is it not possible to like rebuild half of the house and then the, uh, the second hand, uh, half of the house? To dispense with the whole logistics problem? It might be. I'm sadly not a builder, so I do not know the... I do not know the exact details of, of how this works I just know that it will take some time and in that time frame you might need a uh, another place to stay we can certainly ask that uh, to the builder who will take care of rebuilding your havens you say that you are doing this for higher power it's not higher power Higher authority. Higher authority? What higher authority would that be? Ah. That's a nice question. Such a nice question. Higher authority provided by my descendants. After all, it was the. Well, I, out of character, I don't know if I. Do I know the story about the went through, you know, supposedly ruling the second city and all that, would that be in clan occult knowledge that's taught to me or something like that? Um, that's going to be intelligence plus occult. Okay. Or, uh, I'll let you do a charisma and leadership role to give this answer as well. Um, I would prefer that, idea. Yeah. Div 6, please. Um, the typical answer is that uh, the Ventru believe that because they can do something to help uh, those whom they consider important, it is their obligation to therefore do this to help them. Okay, yeah, uh, this just would pretty much say that then. Yeah, once Alvin asks that. It is my obligation to help those that I can help. After all, why wouldn't I if it is within my grasp? Listen, there is a concept that might be a stranger to you and I would understand if it is. 
but the idea is that you have access to things that is very important for me that access and I will say this once is the loyalty we have towards each other your strength means my strength your weakness means my weakness if you are in danger I am in danger if you die it means a part of me dies if you are under the threat of burning in daylight because you lack the resources while I have it to provide it to you then it means I failed the duties expected of me to fulfill and I will not allow that while I am part of this country as such if I see a weak part in this group dynamic I will mend it if I can and I will do so without expecting you to pay for anything in exchange because I am doing this for you in a good intent ill I think that's, uh, I think that's the right word I'm not sure I'm doing it with good intentions. Now his arm uses my own face, he's been finding the entire idea a bit <laughs> alien but uh, adorable in a way. Well, if such is your good intent that commands you to do such a thing, then who am I to deny you? Great. Well, Alpina, once I have the money, I will make sure that your haven is rebuilt. And I think it is a group decision that you want this group um, cult building to be rebuilt as well. I believe so, yes. Okay, I will start with that. As it seems, the um, common interest between all of you and, well, there is a lot of people that needs to live in this place, so quicker is better. Uh, yes, we should, we should look into the um, temporary arrangements for while this is all occurring. Yes, I'm sure between the private homes they have, their families and your own um, arrangements you can make, they will find somewhere to sleep. Uh, but if you, and only you, that means the Coterie members, needs a place to sleep in the meantime, feel free to come to my haven. Oh, well, I, I was placed for you. So, I was thinking more in terms for uh, gatherings, but yes. <clears throat> Is it possible to, do you have a, an architect that would uh, pl plan this thoroughly? Sadly, I do not have a personal architect to uh, contact, but I certainly have means to initiate a relationship with a good uh, architect to help us with this endeavor. Uh, is there a certain thing that worries you, Nicodemus? Maybe I could provide mm. more answers. I am concerned that I would not wish my um, I would not wish my holdings to be uh, to be disrupted, and uh, I do believe your offer take, brings merit, and eventually, or it is only reasonable to protect ourselves from the flames. And uh, I was thinking of uh, um, I would not wish to to um, to 
trace out all of those that live in my household uh, upon uh, under your roof, perhaps perhaps a gradual change would be more optimal. I would need to confer with those who I live with and uh, I would be most interesting to interested to see a, an actual plan of a possible rebuild. I see. It is understandable. Once I initiate a contact with an architect, I will invite you to meet with us and you will be able to firsthand see what he would plan. And if it sounds good enough for you, I will make sure that you also take advantage of this help I'm providing. Hmm, excellent. Now that's... Well. Oh, is there anything you want to say as well, Labiana? So at this point, Labiana uh, has been sort of thinking about DCS's offer. She'll step forward and say, um, firstly, I'm more than happy for you to uh, take care of everybody else first. Uh, I would, however, um, after everyone else has been sorted, ask one favour and she'll sort of kind of t uh, take Decius off to the side in a sense um, first we can go to a kind of place yeah so once there um, Labian will say now I'm not one of those people who wouldn't normally have a a, a separate living well, living haven uh, separate to the uh, separate to our group one. I would, however, ask if perhaps something smaller, perhaps a one sort of large room type setup, could be arranged with certain features, as it were. perhaps for study purposes. That sounds, if, that sounds reasonable. Do you have a, do you have a land you own? A piece of land? At this stage, I have been in the process of uh, looking and um, part of the reason why I suggested you tend to everyone else first. Um, so once I have that in place, um, we can then discuss further um, the dimensions and other things to uh, that will be required for this to take place. This just will put his hand on Labiana's shoulder. And he will smile gently and say, we will do that for you, Labiana. Don't worry. Labiana will look back at uh, Decius, um, usual expressionlessness, but will say, I do appreciate it. With a, less, with a slightly quieter tone, obviously. It's nothing. And please, I don't want to hear the word favor. I'm not doing a favor for you. That's not intimate enough for what I'm trying to represent here. This is a help from a friend. And she will also say, of course. And uh, also, um, don't forget, if you do happen to need anything from myself, do not hesitate to ask. Don't worry, I will not. Well, let's return uh, to our friends then. 
After you. Okay. Is there anything else anyone wants to say about this matter? Otherwise, I would like to remind you one thing that we might be forgetting. Oh? Well, you must remember we made a promise in Athens. Ah, yes. I've been uh, working on uh, some of my notes of the uh, journey. Thankfully, I did keep actually a few uh, small notes down um, at the time itself, so it gives me something to work from, as I recollect. see. Well, I myself didn't have much time to focus at doing any search or something, uh, but I will ask around, uh, see what kind of information will come forward. I believe that I would be able to arrange a one-on-one -on -one meeting um, with the patrician who has the um, writings we are looking for. Uh, of course, under those conditions, we would have to be quite uh, peaceful and friendly. But, but that is already my preference on how we should do this favor. Uh, we are... Of course, that aspect. If we already know the identity of the patrician, then this may be a matter of getting within eyesight of him, dominating him, into hanging over the... No, 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 Alvina. That's much, much unnecessary thing to do. Dominate will be like going through the front door and punching him in the face, then kicking him and picking up the painting. And then kicking down the idol they worship in their house. That's unnecessary, brute. We can fix this with, with our own words, with the politics. Or if it's necessary, we can also steal it with supernatural forces, but even then, we shouldn't be brute. I'll ask you to need to know where the documents are. Yes, I will. I will contact. I will um, see what my contacts will come with. Uh, maybe pull some strings. Uh, something should come forward in the close uh, proximity. Oh, I'll be in a good yeah. time soon. She's been thinking about this for a moment. Perhaps we could arrange something uh, a little more simple than that. Perhaps sending someone posing as a potential perhaps buyer of plays and say they want something, they're interested in something specific and they've heard that through the grapevine that um, they may be able to help. That was uh, 10 years ago. I, I, I sort of doubt they just stuck with it as a memento. They probably either sold it or invested it. How can one invest it? Perhaps they, there are already plays of it. Or perhaps they're in a, in a library of some sort. Once I, as I said, pull the strings and uh, see what my contacts uh, can tell me, I will also pay attention if there was attempts to buy the documents from him. Um, but as Nicodemus say, it's been so many years, and if he still has those documents, the original, documents then it surely means that he does not have intentions to sell them and if i do recall the favor correct the prince of athens wanted us to bring the original ones 
not any copies of it. But perhaps it's through the copies that we may be able to track down the originals in some way. That's why I put forth the suggestion. We can we can decide the specific approach when we are certain precisely what the situation is. Of course. Well, it's been nine years, and I'm sure we still have some time to prepare before we take action. So we should do that before we try to um, grasp grasp the uh, writings and then send it uh, to Athens. See what we can gather. nothing else you might be able to not send in the original sending a convincing enough copy <laughs> that's it's a risky move if things really goes bad for us if you really fail this trivial thing which is supposed to be a trivial thing for us at this point if you fail it uh, miserably then we could try to send the copies of it but I certainly do not prefer to break our word and I will do my best to not break our word to the Prince of Athens. That should certainly be a backup plan. Let's start with any success. If we can get a uh, copies at the, at the very start, that's a good starting point. Well, All right. right around this time, as you guys have been in back in your group haven for like an hour, two hours, um, there is a, a visitor at your door um, who is polite, nice. She's brought in. Um, somebody comes to see you that there is a woman here, uh, here to see you. Uh, her name is Discorde, is how she introduced herself. Discorde. Do you recognize her? No, you have never heard of her before. Is this well, the woman I saw in the party? Uh, do you go up and see her? Oh, she doesn't come to us? Okay, I thought Well, she... she's in, so showing in, but you guys are in the cellar because you have a bunch of new people you have to get used to first. Okay. Um... Uh, please, send her over. Tell her that she's free to come up. Okay. Um, she will do so. Um, she is shown down. She has long brown hair that's kind of stiff. Um, she's got a circlet uh, on top of her head. Her skin is waxy. Um, Decius, this is the woman you saw. Um, she's kind of tall. Uh, her lips are bright red, some sort of makeup. Her eyes are deep set. She's got dark circles under her, under them. Um, very corpsey pallor. Um, her skin just um, very corpse. Uh, she exudes that that I'm a walking dead person uh, feeling, just like LaBiena. I oh, see that you're here. How interesting. Good evening. Uh, she nods at everyone. Um, and she says, uh, I'm so glad to finally meet you all in person. Uh, we've had our eye on you for a long time. Uh, I am Discorde, uh, the head priestess of the cult of Magna Mater. When you say we, I assume you mean the rest of your cult? Yes, you assume correctly. 
welcome to our main gathering point Discord here. How may what has got your the attention of you and your cult? Do I recognize the um cult the cult? Yes you do. The cult is kinda of famous. It's the cult of the Great Mother. Ah. Magna Mater, yeah. Have we had the Mater I'm like yeah. Have you had any sort of dealings with them or with their members? Um, you have not. Uh, their festival is April 4th. Mm, um, convenient. They are one of the few cults that actually have laws around them. Um, because they believe in self-castration. Um... They are in the city because the Sibylline prophecies commanded Rome to recruit them and bring them from Phrygia, which is a region of uh, the southwest part of Gaul, uh, and bring her cult to Rome in order to assure victory over the Carthaginians in the Second Punic War. Hmm. Did, did, she, did she ask us to join her? She's about to. We have been watching you for a number of years. I'm highly impressed that you have kept your little cult going for three generations now, is it? I think three? Yes, that is correct. I believe so. It truly is a great accomplishment. Um, many cults start and fizzle out in a year or less. Uh, as soon as their founders die, they disappear. The minds of the mortals are easy enough to manipulate. And this cult has the benefit that the founders did not die. Indeed. Aren't we surrounded with our followers right now? I understood that we are on the second floor. I thought you were in the cellar, but yeah. Um, in the cellar as well. The yeah, you go, you would be in the eight. cellar because you have new herd members that aren't quite used to what's going on yet. Okay. Basically, we are away from frying it. As... Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> she says, uh, Our, one of my members was in the crowd of your performance last night and spoke very favorably of your interpretation of the uh, performance uh, about how one must look at different perspectives. Uh, one must at times reject the conventional morality. Uh, this goes well with the speech that I heard uh, Decius give. I was in the crowd for him. I heard his speech. We could use people of your talents. Uh, the men and women of our cult. Women of our cult. Um believe in uh, much the same thing that to you must know both sides of all things in order to bring yourself into harmony uh, with the world and with gods uh, you need our numbers you need our power our influence war is going to break out we have seers who have seen it what kind of war? Sorry. A war for the soul of Rome. What would you ask of us? On April 4th, our main festival will happen. There will be singing and dancing, plays, games, all stuff to entertain the mortals. I would like you to come to our temple 
on the night of the 4th and witness an internal ceremony. We are inducting a new member, a man to take the place of Attila, who was the male prophet uh, of our goddess when we, he, when we were brought to Rome. I would like you to witness it and afterwards to pledge yourself to our cult and join with us. You will be given honored positions, protection, and the chance to learn all that we have to teach. <clears throat> you understand, such an offer provides a big um, question to us. And we need to discuss around that question. We will need time. You have until the night of the 4th. If you do not appear, I will simply assume that you have chosen to reject our generous offer. That sounds fair. Before you leave, I want to ask... I do assume Ancona Messalina is one of you. You assume wrongly. I see. Thanks for the answer. <clears throat> well, um... I think we are, um, uh, what's the word for it? We are, fuck, I'm f I forgot the word. What's the word for feeling, um, you know, like good by something happening that you didn't expect to you? I don't know. Just um, pleasantly surprised? Yeah, something like that. Well, I am. I'm happy for what you think of us, of our cult. We Wait. will think about it, we will come to a decision. And once we come to a decision, I'm sure you will know it in one way or another. Regardless... Actually, oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, out of character, um, I don't know about anyone else, but uh, Lubbyana in particular, I don't know if she would actually know anything about the uh, Magna Mater cult itself. Only what's Obviously. publicly known. Okay. You would know what every other Roman citizen knows. Um, Probably, yeah. Sorry. Real quick, one question I have out of character real quick, just to make sure on things. Um, the, the self-castration thing, that isn't a mandatory thing for every single male worshipper, right? Um, it's not mandatory, but it is a sacrament. Um, castrados are, uh, the only ones allowed into the upper ranks. Right, uh, yeah, so, but it, it yeah, but, like, you know, yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure we, it wasn't going to be demanding you know, every single male worshipper to make that kind of sacrifice. I wouldn't join. Would I know other cults that had similar policies? Well, one of the reasons this cult is has laws around it is because Roman citizens are forbidden by law to be a members of it. Now, they are, people break that law all the time, but rich people don't break that law. <laughs> uh, low class people break that law and get away with it. And based on what we heard, it, how, actually, how popular exactly is it? Um, quite popular. It is a strong cult. The, uh, uh, there, there is a statue of the Great Mother permanently embedded in the Circus Maximus. Mm. Okay. That's fine. Uh, another question is, how, sm how smug uh, Discorda, Discorda is? Discord. Is she like... Uh, like I wouldn't say person? smug, she's or, confident. Or, or more like gamble. Oh, confident. She, okay. She's not smug, she's confident. 
we, um, we... <clears throat> I think uh, we would like to make this discussion in a private um, for, for, yes we will discuss this matter amongst ourselves but I would like to emphasize that regardless of what else we decide we immensely appreciate this offer indeed yes it is and a fledgling uh, one and if we do indeed decide to take you up on your offer we will come back to you and let you know well, you know where to find me. Let me take you to the door. Exit. Um, she allows you to walk her out. Good evening, okay. Discord. I, I don't do anything f funny in the way. I just let her go to exit. Yeah, she doesn't do it. <laughs> she doesn't do anything funny to you either. She just walks out and turns down the street and leaves. Any, uh, any animal spies they left? No. Excellent. Well, we have two two ways of dealing with it, I reckon. We can either take over from the inside or fuck up their little celebration. Um, my opinion, we shouldn't join them. How do you th what, what do you think is going to happen when we just say, oh, well, not interested? Well, what's going to happen is they might try to do some fancy stuff on us. They might try to pull their influence, contacts, uh, resources, all that stuff you are aware of uh, to hinder us. But is this not the reason in the first place you went to Alexander, asked for him to be your patron? Or do I recall wrong? That was a different cult. She's not asking us to join her quite yet. At least not to the same degree as creatures as. For now, all that she requests is for us to attend the ceremony of, them, of theirs. And I think that this is not something that they should just reject out of hand. I do think, while it is not openly stated, the fact we are going to their ceremony where they will introduce a new member to their cult, uh, it shows a certain, it gives a certain message uh, to the uh, audience and to ourselves, or I should say to our self-respect. Well, they want, they want to be viewed as friendly type of takeover. But nonetheless, it will be takeover. Honorable positions? Maybe so, but, event, but it, will, it will mean that, it, that uh, our cult is null and void. Also, I do want to remind you, honorable positions is a very vague thing to say, especially yeah. when we are talking about cults. Tell me, Head Shepsut, what would you consider from the mortal eyes the weirdest thing about this cult? Well, the silence must mean there is a lot of weird things about this cult, oh. which is enough of an answer for me. See, this is what I'm talking about. The man in those cults is expected to get rid of their genitals. Not, not all of them. Not all of them, but most of them, think... if they want to be in the higher position. I'm just trying to say that every cult in some way has a weird thing going for them. And the word honorable does not mean you will be excluded from those weird things. As such, the things she told us right now does not mean a lot to me. It just means that this is a gentle Take offer over. Uh, to give ourselves uh, to their control, which I personally am not okay with. That, 
boys have anything to lose by jo uh, by joining this ceremony of this. I agree. You about this castration, you grow it back. <laughs> That's Let's a funny thing to say. I wonder Listen. if the face is castrated. If you want to see this this special thing that they will do in the fort, um, and if you do not want to join their cult while doing that, I think a clear message will be some of you going there while some of us not. That would clearly be the message. We are curious about what's going to happen today, but we do not want to join you. Now, understand that there are kindreds on their part, and once you go to their meeting, you will be in the mouth of the monster. You will be, to a certain degree, helpless. Who knows what they might try to pull on you if you are not willing subjects. Mm. Can you promise that they will not try to influence you on supernatural levels? Of course they will. Do you have intentions to join them after seeing what this meeting is about? Well, Perhaps. Perhaps. That's good enough. Perhaps means once you go to that meeting for intentions to learn what it is about, but not necessarily join, they might try to use a presence or dominate or something else you are not aware of uh, to influence you. and. That might be the little nudge necessary for you to turn from perhaps to yes, I want to join them without actually being willing for it. Is this a certain thing you really want to risk at this point when we already accomplished a certain milestone? At least, thanks to me, we accomplished a certain milestone. Your cult grew in size. Pretty Thanks. exponentially. Thanks. Thanks to you. She raised an eyebrow at that. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Calm down. That wasn't exactly exponentially 30 people, but it was a significant uh, contribution. Let's focus on the problem at hand. That um, Dishes is, is right, con uh, saying that it's a risk to go there, but nonetheless, it's it's, it's curious to know what their angle is, and perhaps not going there would be as bad. We, well, we, Labiana kind of speaks up at this point. We also have to remember, um, it's not just about um, whether or not uh, we want to jo uh, view, uh, view this ceremony of theirs and potentially join their cult. Uh, remember, she mentioned something about a war. Yes, they mentioned that this is so now welcome from the soul of Rome. I, I do feel the need to point out that while it's certainly something we need to consider as likely, we don't have hard evidence that this is necessarily malicious in um, design. Perhaps we should visit Trifosa, see if her, uh, if she can share her visions with us, if her visions collaborate anything about this war for the soul of Rome. Do you want to do you want to go to a Malkavian? Yes. You know what that means, right? What? It means that you are taking an action that is risky on its own. I mean, yes, they do have great insight, but they are also Malkavians. And it means there is a certain clear dangers to dealing with them. Did you say that we you have, do not... Well, we have lots of options well, to make a, dis make a decision. We can do a lot of things, ask too many people uh, for input. Um, and Malkavian is not necessarily one of the first we should go to. Uh, let me, are you 
Before you continue speaking you of the cleanser of Malkath, I'd like to remind you that this position, that the position of sheriff, is held by one of them. I did not question how dangerous that can be. I questioned how dangerous it will be for us to deal with them from the first hand. You see, this is like the big lever that you would pull if things are going really bad or you have not so many options to pick beforehand. We can, of course, go to a Malkavian and ask for their input. I'm just saying that we shouldn't do it at the beginning of our I, discussion. I would like to remind everyone that I, I myself possess some, some fortune seeing ability. If you believe that you might be able to see this, the validity behind this, then by all means, go ahead. But Tarfosa is the one that got me and Nicodemus on this Artemy service, on the sense of Lady Artemis, and I trust her insight. I trust her insight a great deal, regardless of her clan. Reaching her and actually getting a telling would be an art in itself. Possibly a quite hefty favor. Indeed. That could also be another thing. Um, the fact that she introduced you to the Artemis does not mean she will do this for a small favor. She might actually ask for a lot from you. Yeah. Oh. Okay, how about this? How about we just go through the information we have first and make sure we've gone through it all first and then come back to this. So I am going to go consult the stars. Um, what's the, Shall we roll for weather or do you just have something in mind for what it is? We only have two nights to address this, unfortunately. At the very least, we should learn who is pulling their strings? Well, I'm I... just going to say this here and now. Um, as much as I'm interested in finding out more about this, this uh, cult of theirs, I for one will not be joining them. Everyone else can decide for themselves, but... Is anyone actually considering it seriously? I... I don't see it any other way than than this diminishing everything we have achieved with the cult. There's Indeed. just all of us. Indeed, if if it is actually something that we would consider throughoutly, uh, consider really, then we are talking about. Well, I am. I haven't been part of this school for a long time, so. It's definitely not a great effort I've been put into this. But for you, it's been, as she said before, a three generation of investment you made and just giving up on it so easily after one person showing up and talking about a war and other stuff. Well, that's a lack of commitment and faith in one's own doing. And this is that's such a shameful trait to have. If you cannot trust in your own investment, whose investment can you trust in then? We do not your know. Your sires, maybe? We do not know if, there to be a, if we are going to lose the, our coat should we accept her offer. This is something that we need to discuss with her still, with her, they are the leaders of, their, of the cult. Subjugation means, even if on paper or on agreement, it might mean that we still keep this cult, it will not be your cult anymore. To accept to join them is simply subjugating. We are accepting that their authority is over us, and therefore they have a decision to make over what our cult does. And they will also most definitely convert them to their own beliefs because we are talking about a cult. cult. You cannot have a separate ideology spreading around 
in your cult that's defying the whole intentions of the cult itself. You have clearly not been wandering some of the stranger causes of mystery cults. I cannot say it's one of my primary interests. No. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's put a pin in this. Um, if we get to it later tonight, then great. If not, uh, we can hash it out on the message board and come back to it next game. Uh, cool. Let's go ahead and finish off uh, Nicodemus's uh, replacement for the child victim and perhaps even get Fa Labiana in to talk to Fazia, and then uh, we... Might have to. We might have time to get to the possibly talking to the guy about those paperwork that you promised to, to get. So, um, Nicodemus, you were coming up with a plan uh, to gather a replacement, and In. assume you're going to ask your coterie for help. Yes, uh, I have a a certain thing to solve. Thus. Any of you have any sort of contact to do on the world? I need to find myself a a person from a from under a dark star. I I could definitely find some minor contacts, and they will possibly have what you're looking for. I need to be pointed out towards some some gang members that have been rumored to stalk people on the streets, exhort money, ambush them for for extortion, whatever. Do you wish to kill those gang members or make a deal I, with them? I, I need to abduct one of them. It doesn't matter who it is. But it matters that they have enough on their conscience. May I inquire what this uh, is for, Nicodemus? It's to a certain appetite. I trust you are aware that my that one of my mentors is in town. If you wish, I can help send the, someone on their way. If you just give me the location. Uh, I, I can handle it, but I could use your help in locating one. If, so if you have any contacts that may point towards uh, where the hiding place of a gang or their turf is, uh, I could probably see. Perhaps if any of you wish to spare troops, to the down to the realm of the downtrodden, I could use some some physical assistance. I would be willing to help in any way I can. <clears throat> Listen, I'm sure I can find them. Um minor contact who would know someone that would fit in uh, to the profile you need uh, they could give a location for you to go and seek someone to capture that sounds like a great idea and well, I will uh, I will get in contact then do you need it tonight or next uh, next day for the next day uh ideally tonight but i understand it's fairly late so worst case scenario if it's the next night uh, that's good as well um what's the what's the hour right now chris i mean how late is it it's getting pretty late maybe four uh, o'clock in the morning no. I... uh, I Next night. Think... Okay. And I do not yes. think it's going to be possible to do it tonight. Yeah, that's fair. Well, 
also if you like Nicodemus, knowing how you feel about the human condition, I'm willing to help with the abduction part, if you like. Oh, the abduction part isn't a problem. It, it's, it's, the, it's the next part, but... But let's just see how it goes. I'll I'll be glad with the with the assistance. Uh, nothing nothing like a second pair of us to assist with the act. Fair enough. Also, I actually meant to ask out of character. Would um, Mabiena? have got enough information from Nicodemus to kind of piece together that he might have been talking about Foesia. I think so. He did say one of his mentors is in town and the abduction, so uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of uh, uh, impossible that it be any kind of salubri that wanted people to be abducted for them. I don't know. It could be that one salubri who uh, got a very divergent from the rest of his peers. <laughs> the salubri that's going through his phase. <laughs> The emo Okay, so I understood the plan is that this uh, um, use helps with his contacts to pinpoint some kind of a ruthless gang. Um, and uh, it will be a gang member, not necessarily a gang itself. Yeah, that, 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 that's fair. It, the way I, I understood it would work is that uh, is that we learn a location of a turf of a gang where they frequent and how often do they show up there. And the rest is up to, well, those who do the deed. Yeah, pretty much. I will give you the information and then you and Labia and I, if, you, if, he, if she is there, can abduct. Excellent. It will be more than helpful, thank you. That's nothing. Uh, for the minor context, I will need to make a roll, though. I will need to roll my contacts, actually, to get, to get in contact. Okay. You begin accessing your contacts, you guys. Um, Send out letters, uh, getting leads. Um, I will have uh, Nicodemus roll his um, wits and investigation. And how many contacts are you guys donating for this roll? Uh, what, what do you mean by donating? How many points of contacts do you want to let him use so that you will not be able to access the rest of the night? Okay, um, three. He can access all of my contacts. Uh, okay. Dots, essentially. All right, and is anybody else helping him in this investigation? I not have any contacts that can help, but could I perhaps uh, use my personal skills? Yes, so Albina and Decius, and who else? Um, Labiana, you're going to help, right? I think I can contribute one dot. Okay. So one, two, three, four, seven. Yeah, roll seven extra dice, Nicodemus. Seven, okay. Put those. Yeah, wits investigation plus seven. That's a crappy roll. Uh, it may be crappy, but that's all you need. With three mm. successes, um, you hear uh about a certain uh, small street gang that has been uh, trying to put the squeeze on a couple of brothels. They are, what they'll do is they will go in and overwhelm the front uh, mistress 
and then they'll pick out a couple of the uh, women there and go and beat the shit out of them and take some money and then they'll leave and they'll th extort them for protection money or they'll keep doing it. And we say small street gang, we're talking probably somewhere between four and ten people. So it actually is pretty small. They got a very small area to work in. Excellent. Uh, okay. So Labiana is interested in uh, assisting physically. Indeed. So I guess we meet up someplace and go to stake out the place. Right. Yeah, so you guys meet up, um, the two of you. Uh, you watch uh, these very small geographical area, so you're just paying attention. Eventually you see about three guys, three, about maybe four guys rolling up to a uh, uh, small building. Um, they crash open the door, and you hear the front lady screaming, Get out! Get out of here! We don't want your guy back here! And uh, there's some screaming and shouting, and you hear the sound of uh, fist, hitting, uh, his fist hitting flesh. And uh, there's, they're trying to force their way into the door. So there's about three guys getting in there, and the fourth guy is trying to shove his way in behind them. Possible to nick the to nick the uh, fourth guy while the three guys are inside. Yes, it is. So like ambush ambush him from behind, uh, sneak a sneak a uh, a hand over his mouth and drag him off to the uh, to the to the dark alleyway and knock him unconscious. Yep, that's exactly what I think you're going for. Yeah. All right, uh, the two of you will both roll dexterity plus athletics. And you're going to combine your successes. Okay. Uh, let's put some. Let's put some buff into it. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to screw it up. So the, screw it up. Screw it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you really want to, uh, athletics. Looks fun. So div six was it? Um, yes. I might actually spend a willpower on this one because I'm presuming the two I spent before have replenished. Um, they have not, but you can go ahead and spend it anyways. I suppose one would have because I think it's. Well, next we're we're time, gonna we're gonna say none because we're just for tonight we're. I'll, Still tired, but that's a lot of successes. That is literally more successes than he can roll. So unless Nicodemus botches his side of this, uh, his side of this roll. Oh, I just rolled. Oh, that was that was yours. Sorry. Unless Labietta botches her side of this roll, then uh, you guys have easily pulled this off. Yeah, but I will put a willpower into this. I'm happy to go down to three temporary for the. Yeah, the two of you, um, it, it's almost comedic how easy this goes for you. Uh, the guy's trying to push his way in. He's pushing the guy, he's pushing his buddy in the back. You just walk up behind him and uh, slip a rope over, uh, a bag over his head, a uh, quick rabbit punch to his kidney, bam, 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 drag him out, just like that, just that quick. Boom. Two, three seconds, it's done. Um shove him in the alley, punch and kick him until he passes out. So before the others can turn around and realize he's gone, where the hell did he go? Yeah, they're like, that, <laughs> exactly. They're like, that, that cat cowardly son of a bitch ran off. They are too busy beating off uh, defenseless hookers. Mm -hmm. well, they're not quite defenseless. They've got a few clubs and... Uh, uh, sharp weapons to defend themselves, so they are quite occupied. And uh, when, when women get mad at you, they are vicious. Uh, they're going for the junk. 
That's that's what they're they're not going for a belly stab or just wildly. No, no, they're going for the men's junk. So yeah, they are uh, uh, they're being vicious about their defense. Soon they'll have no choice but to join the uh, cult of the Magna Mater. So that's why it is so popular. All right. You find a new yeah. sense of purpose. Yep. You uh, just just as it's as, as, as easy to say it as it as it actually happened. You walk up, snag that man, jerk him back into the alley, shove him up against the wall. His head bounces off the back. Couple of quick gut punches. He goes down to his knees. Um, and you get that roundhouse swing, clock him right under the jaw. Boom! And he goes down. Boom! He goes down. He's out. Okay, now comes the hard part as well. Drag him through the streets of Rome towards Fazio's Haven. Or sure. workshop, Respect wherever it is. Well, I was say, would... Um... Fabiana would probably just consider slinging him over her shoulder. Yep. Yeah, you guys can do that. <laughs> Up over the yeah. shoulder and walk him walk him around. You guys that should draw cover attention. him. That would draw attention somehow. Well like pull a cloak over him or something. Yeah, you can do that. Disguise him as a big bag of potatoes or um oh, that that's that something. Happen. So we can pretend he's our drunken buddy or something too. Also, also just remember that people that we're in a point in Roman history where people getting disappeared off the streets isn't too uncommon. Yeah, but that's an understatement. People, it's very common. <laughs> I'm half tempted to disappear some of uh, some more of those from those gangers, but that's something for another time. Let's okay. drag this one to yeah. our lovely mentor. You uh. The two of you um, drag him through the streets of Rome, sometimes literally, sometimes on your backs, and uh, dump him inside this damp, wet cave. And she's like, oh, good, you're back. Awesome. Wasn't too hard, was it? Really? I've brought you someone who would offer more balanced results. Okay, good. Listen, I really need that ability where you guys can look at him and tell me how healthy he is, because I don't have that. That's really going to be key. So what can we do to either get you or Gregorius to do that for me? Healer Celebrate 404. <laughs> Uh, is it something I comp can compensate for my perception with my perception alone? She she's like, look, uh, I mean, I've got some, you know, ability to monitor their health, and you know, I know you are like amazing when it comes to this stuff because that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to you know bring you to to me to bring you into my blood, but uh, and I sense your curiosity. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to do this right, which is why, you know, I asked for both you and your child. Because I don't know how all that, uh, you know, third eye stuff works yet. I haven't gotten that far in my research. So I was wondering if one of you had that ability. Yeah, go on, let's... Uh, well, I don't think Gregorius is going to visit. He's not exactly willing to uh, embrace your to put that, to. He's not exactly sharing your vision of particular examination. Yeah. And I admit it's it's a little rough around the edges. Even if it gets the job done. Um, if we can settle for uh, for a possible night of work on this, perhaps I can master something in. I mean, well, I guess we'll do what we have to do. Uh, I was hoping for a, 
uh, perfect accuracy, but I'll have to take for mostly accurate if that's that's what we got to do. Um, speaking of, and she turns to look at Labiana. You're different. You're not as weak as you used to be. I can feel it. She looks so easier. Indeed. Listen, about last time, I will admit to being a bit short-sighted. I admit now that uh, there may have been more to what you were doing than uh, I initially realised. I see that now. Did he explain what he needs this guy for? Because I'm going to explain, and then I'm going to make a deal with you. You ready? I'm listening. Okay, so listen, I was going to use a child for this, and he convinced me that it's better to use an adult. I'll, and I'll work my way back to a child eventually. But uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to start here. So, listen. I'm going to starve this man almost to death. All right? And right as he's about to die, I'm going to feed him and keep him on the verge of death. And the idea is, because putting dead organs in living bodies wasn't working, um, I want to see if I can physically keep somebody on the verge of death for so long that I can use their pain and closeness to being dead to bring forth those deathly energies. You know, he's most likely going to pass out before this happens. Oh, well, I mean, there's plenty of people here. Well, obviously, as Fel is he's explaining this, um, she can actually see Labiana's eyes start to light up as much as, as possible for a Cappadocian's eyes to light up, especially one who's newly converted to the Road of Bones. I don't think any of them is going to to not faint, except maybe for this strong guy. Yeah. I mean, they all got to sleep sometime, so I really don't care. Um, uh, anyways, and she grabs him and she puts him uh, on the hook. And uh, you notice that there's a taller one so that his feet are barely touching the ground. Uh, so he doesn't have enough... Um, uh, a room to like jump and pull himself free. And she's like, so let's, I'm going to make you a deal, you know, cause like I said, you, you, you've gained some strength. So now you, now you're kind of worthy of my attention here. I'll let you help me with this. Maybe even teach you a little bit, but you have to agree to find a way to learn that, judging health level, health, uh, how healthy somebody is by sight. Can you do that? I'll be in a pondus for a moment. I'll admit I'm extremely interested in uh, what you are attempting here. There can be much information we can gather from this. And uh, I'll agree to trying to obtain that kind of an ability. Now, out of character, just quickly, um, could thanatology help her with this? Or is that sort of more on the opposite end of the spectrum? Um, that's more on the opposite end. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So, cause I don't know if there's any way... A Cappadocian can do that? Well, you have to learn Healer Valerian. Mm. Or, or, I mean, you could theoretically do it the hard way and go on an expedition to East Asia, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that probably would not be advisable. Don't know if Labiana would know that, though. But yeah. I don't know if she'd know anything about... She doesn't know anything about Salubri lore. <laughs> 
or the uh, Hungry Dad. Hmm. I think the only canine clans, only two canine clans are really going to have any idea of the Hungry Dead at this point. Well, so anyways, um, Nicodemus, my friend, my, my, my would-be Childa, you know I want you here, you know I want your help. Um, I believe you could learn so much from this. But uh, I also understand if uh, your stomach's a little weak for this kind of work right now. So, uh, you know, do come by and visit me. Seriously. I love you and I'd love to see you. Let's settle on an actual date. In, in, in two nights, um, actually, the next night and a few upcoming nights, I may be not be available because there's some boring stuff going on. But otherwise, I would be thrilled to see what kind of progress you make with your starving maneuver. I admit I haven't studied how the starvation works exactly upon a, upon a flesh and the mind. I usually have to deal with already at this state, and I actually wanted to preserve my target patient. Um, she comes up, she, she hugs you, she kisses your cheek, uh, again, uh, and I mean, a big, she can't quite get noisy because her lips are, like, pulled back against her teeth, so she can't give you the big, noisy, wet smooch, but she does the best she can. <laughs> and she's like, I knew you would come around, I knew you would come around and see it my way. Does a piece of flesh just stick on Nicodemus's cheek? No. <laughs> she, 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 she grooms her, uh, her uh, decaying flesh to prevent that kind of thing from happening. Hey, it would contaminate her work if she let pieces of herself fall into it. Mm. Fair. She Fair. just eats them, yeah. <laughs> there is one thing that I must ask of you, dear Fazia. And Gregorius will never understand the thing you're doing, and he will not cross the certain threshold for knowledge. Please do not involve him in any way. Do not even mention this to him. Well, no. if, if if you insist that uh, that he remain away from it, I I can I can. I was going to say live with that, but that's the wrong phrase. I can I can exist with that. Excellent. It would be for the best. Well, it would be for the best if he was brought into our fold, but it's for the second best to keep him ignorant, so we'll go with that. So, in any case, he's your childa. He's your responsibility. I'll abide by your rules regarding him. That's all I... Inquire. Well then, see you in a couple of nights. Do try to not uh, well. I promise not to, to try not to kill him before that. So Oh yeah. I mean, that, yeah. That, that that would well, interfere with what I'm trying to do. So yeah, certainly. certainly. Okay. Well, Thank you. I'm uh, going to get started cataloging his uh, his physical condition. He might be a little bit rowdy. He's not exactly the, the kindest citizen, but I assume that by now you have means of lowering the noise level. Now, uh, you know, well, normally I'd remove the tongue, but he might need that, so... Uh... Well, I was just about to say, for the purposes of this experiment, I don't think that's really, uh, what's the word, um, necessary. Well, anyways, it, his screams won't leave my cave, so we're good. It won't affect us anyway. 
I mean, it's the closest I get to having a musician down here anyways. <laughs> that, that really so sounded like you're alone for some good quality music. Would you like this to be arranged? Would a um, sort of good musical performance improve are, your... Are you offering to... Are you offering musicians to him? Well, if you wanted to sing for me, I would love that. We used to do that all the time back in Thebes, and, you know, you know a lot has happened since then, so... Uh, my voice got a bit rusty, but I can... Perhaps I can squeeze out a tune, one, one or two, fitting for the for, uh, uh, for the present decorum of your of your lo lo lovely hideout. Wonderful! I have a bone rattle that'll work great. Give me a second. And she wanders into one of the other um, one of the other chambers, and she starts. You hear squelching sounds and rustles and thumps of flesh as she's like tossing stuff to the side um you hear her muttering now where the where the hell is that thing go where did it go i i swear i looked it back here and uh, eventually she does appear um streaked with stuff uh with a bony protuberance in her hand that um, rattles like a macarena rattle oh well i was just gonna say um love you in a wanted to ask Nicodemus something quickly whilst she was looking for yep. whatever that was. Obviously, you know, whilst still expressionless, um, looking a little more enthusiastic as she normally would about, you know, learning some stuff. She turns to Nicodemus and she goes, whilst I understand um, your predicament here, are you sure you wouldn't want to help us? Um, um, again, what's the word, what I'm looking for? Uh, a, 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 a prize, a praise, this gentleman's health, um, you know, before the experiment begins. You know, you wouldn't actually be involved in anything, um, any of the callous parts. We would ensure that. What difference does it make? What, what is the meaning behind you won't be involved exactly? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot you were, you've become detached enough to not understand the difference. Well, there isn't any. The sheer involvement already implicates me and it hardly matters if I actually conduct myself with it or just let it happen. It's exactly the same. But since we are already here, might as well use the opportunity to learn something that might benefit in the long term. Well, you must know that uh, I do appreciate anything you can do. That's the plan. That's why I offered. Just not that this particular instance with all the various uh, celebrations and all of that background noise with the cult. I understand. That was pretty much it. <laughs> Out of character. All right. Um, so you guys spend as much time there as you want to spend. Um, you have a short little party. Maybe sing a few old time songs. You and uh, the guy has some uh, bruises, uh, no but no broken bones. He'll be if he was given some proper food and rest, he would be just fine. Here's hoping the crazy Falzia will keep him in shape, more or less, for the time being. All right. So, last thing we wanted to do tonight, um, you can 
go talk to Alexander or because he would like to see you when you have time. Um, or you can go attempt to get the uh, documents, the uh, speeches of Demosthenes and the plays of Aeschylus uh, that you promised that you would get. Is the latter one uh, fast enough to actually do in half an hour? I believe Maybe you could, you actually, it? if you... Oh. Yep. Oh, there. Uh, okay. I, I think... Yeah, I mean, if we can do it in a half a, half an hour, I think we should do it first, and the next session we can talk with Alexander. I have asked my. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um. Well, let's quickly decide which what kind of approach we want to take. Are we going to do this in a negotiation way, such as we have, we want to buy this from you or whatever, or do we want to use like the Albina's shadow powers to sneak in the building and steal the painting? Well, I think the ba the basic question is if he even has those items on himself already. I can, uh, well, I can make a context or influence or both role to see if he has those documents. Yeah, we need to learn that first. Maybe someone heard if he was selling or uh, or perhaps he had some guests that he was showing it to. Yeah, pretty much. I will, I will try to see. Uh, what kind of information I can get uh, from my background, essentially. All right. Um, we're going to roll a wits and investigation roll. I'm not good at that. Yeah. Yeah, something else, like, I don't know, politics, maybe? Uh, you, if you have allies, you can always tap an ally to help you here. Yeah, I do have allies. All right. Do you have an ally? I don't think we flushed your allies out, so. No, I do not. Think any, we have flushed them out. And anyone that can, uh, any of us can help him with that, or this is too specific. Yeah. No, if you have contacts or an ally that can help, um, speak up. Not me. I I have allies. Yes, I can tap to my ally. I have allies of three, so I can. The best I could do is perhaps try to talk to my mentor, to my sire. Would you like for me to try that? No, we don't have really okay. time for that. Uh, okay, I will tap to my allies to make this first. All right, roll your wits plus investigation plus uh, four extra dice. Four extra dice. Okay. Yep. Wits plus investigation plus four extra dice. Difficulty. Six, please. So seven for me. So I wasn't sure. I'm not uh, sure my particular I, I assume, allies would be able to help in this instance. I assume I cannot add my context to this. Correct, because but, you loaned them to um, Nicodemus. Yeah, okay. Um, and neither influence. Yeah, it, influence is not really the background for this. Influence is getting things done. Okay, so there's two success. Two? All right, yeah. Um, he considers them to be a prized possession, a possession of um, value because they are rare and um, sought after. Okay, so he has, right, but... he has a possession of the documents, and he thinks that they are worthy enough important enough that he does not sell them, or at least as long as there is not a really good yeah. price being offered. Yeah, the, nobody has made him a good enough offer to get rid of them. But is he selling copies of them? No, they want the originals. Yeah, people want the original. It's, it's not necessarily that the documents being, it's about like the power or influence the, or like- the These things are status you know. symbols. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So that's why the originals are important. It's like, yeah, I got the real shit, you know. This is the real yeah. shit. Um, so, I think if it goes straight, I think he will, we can offer something he would like. Uh, I think we will be, all of us together will be good enough for offering something he would uh, consider giving the documents in exchange of. 
also this is like this that will be like i don't know the chain of owing favors you know like we owe favor and then we owe another favor to complete that favor and there's just no end of it we can really if we can get some time with him we can really dominate him into accept uh, uh, i think dominate is very unreasonable thing to do dominate is like no there's many things we can do and dominate is trying to take the shorter way but it also can lead up to very bad things very stupid things when it can be so much easier so i think we should keep the dominate for the last resort we shouldn't take the easy okay. pets like in a lazy way out of character do we actually know um the wording of the plays at all enough to be able to make copies of our own and somehow no not them. not that good <laughs> okay um nicodemus actually has the most training in this so he would be able to flip through them if he saw them and say these seem pretty i don't think we're getting ripped off um also remember i think the prince had the original documents before, so he would definitely know all Well, he's not a prince, he was a governor of the area. No, I mean, no. the prince of Athens, I think, had the documents oh, before. The archon. So, yeah. the archon would probably know the original documents, at least recall a little bit about them. Either case, I think uh, we should arrange a meeting with him, and we should do this in a peaceful way. So, we should, ask, we should offer him something in exchange of those documents. And between all of us, we will be able to offer him something he will be okay with. And hopefully, he will ask something from us that will not lead to future owing favors, to fix other favors. Perhaps even ask him, uh, well, I would say perhaps even ask him if there's anything he might want in return, but he might not want to give them up so readily. Yeah, we can make an exchange. Okay, so let's, I will, if I can, I will try to arrange a meeting, if your guys are okay with it, I will try to arrange a meeting between us and him. Uh, to try to buy the documents from him. Um, you have enough influence to do that easily. Okay. Well, I mean, no one said otherwise, so okay, let's uh, arrange a meeting. All right. Um, you tap a couple of favors through your influence. Um, you get a meeting. Uh, it's going to take place very early in the night, or it, I should say in the morning. So very late for you guys. Um, you don't have a lot of time to spend negotiating with him if you're going to get it before dawn and have time to get back home. Yeah, I will. I will hire a big um, carriage or something for us, so that if it is necessary, I mean, we will be traveling in that carriage, and it will probably protect us from sunlight if things goes bad for us. So, Marcus Emilius Scaurus is what's known as the Princeps Senatus. He is the senior highest-ranking member of the Mortal Senate in Rome. He is one of the most prestigious and influential politicians, if not the most prestigious politician in Rome. Chris, can you, can you write his name? So you can expect heavy guardsmen, um, lots of uh, scrutiny on his behavior, people watching his house. You do not want to do overt stuff here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we should not risk. You should be very careful. And also, remember, we are going very early in the morning, so we should do this fast. And of course, knowing he's mortal, Lavian is obviously opting to. Uh, yeah, hide. you know what? I think I think Alpina and uh, you should opt out from this because of your flaws. That's fair enough. I remember. <laughs> yeah. I remember the meeting that I would take through the fucking cup. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh shit, guys. I, I got hit with a tide wave real bad. Um, I might need to drop out now. Okay. 
have a good night. Um, two experience points tonight. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night. Hey. Okay, okay. Nicodemus and I will handle these issues. Okay, uh, yeah. So we just want to buy from him? Uh, yeah, we want to buy from him. We will speak in the name of the Kutri and offer him something, either in exchange of something or a favor. Uh, we shall see. I mean, he probably has the money, influence, and context to get whatever he wants. So whatever we will offer, it will be something he won't be, he won't have access to. Yeah, what the hell could he want? That's the question. Um, Find something that they cry some supernatural influence. So we will see. We will see. Just be careful. All right. Can so I... you make your way there. Um, he has a magnificent villa <clears throat> on the uh, Palatine Hill. Um, his uh, domus is marble. And um, his domus, domus is marble and stone. Uh, you are shown in with the utmost courtesy. Uh, the family statue is Mars and Venus. I guess uh, Nicodemus would like to uh, don some more aristocratic face. Okay. Look more, more like. Someone who this pompous ass would like to uh, talk, not 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 a Greek plebeian. Uh, uh, let's see, what do I need to roll? <laughs> yeah, of course I don't have it. Mm. So I guess this is mask of thousand faces. Yes, it is. Uh, I forgot what the role was. Just looking for it. Uh, I'll have to look that one up myself. Uh, manipulation plus performance. Difficulty 7. Uh, you only need one success, though. To appear as yourself, just more aristocratic. Okay. Oh, excellent. Super aristocratic. You can appear essentially however you want to be. You can be actually Italian aristocrat. Yeah. Uh, let's try and match this. Uh, is is Ducius? I uh, I. Uh, how does Ducius look like? Is he a typical Roman aristocracy or? Is it something else? He he's pretty much how a Roman patrician would look like in a daily life. Um, let's look nearly as good, but worse. Okay. We don't want to eclipse this year. You appear as his um, slightly less good-looking son. That's about what you look like. Is his you're slightly uglier, and you look like his child. Could be. Why not? He can pose as a cousin or something. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, so you are brought in. Um, you are sat down, shown the... Uh, uh, you are offered a uh, wake-up morning glass of a cup of uh, watered-down wine, which is typically what would be drunk. Some grapes, things like that. And uh, he appears, and he... Of course, appears to be quite sleepy and tired. He would normally be sleeping at this time, but he um, got up just to have a meeting with you. Shit. Um, I will, once we are in his presence, I will activate presence one R. I would like to have the pre phrase uh, negotiator. Okay. Useful All right. Process. Spend your blood point and make the roll, please. Um, I think it was charisma and performance. performance. Yep, at difficulty seven. So, it's 
sent up Butch. No, it's just, just a failure. Up. All right, you attempt to call forth the supernatural aura. You don't know if it worked or not, but he walks in. Um, he gives you the uh, Solve uh, citizens. Good morning. Same thing. Um, what will be the correct title to address him, by the way? Well, uh, Princeps Senatus. Okay. Do, do I have to say his name, or? Uh, you could just address him as uh, Princeps Senatus. Would be fine, or. Uh, or for the, if you wanted to be perfectly correct on the role play, or just say Marcus if you want to be quicker. I will just say Marcus, but I can't believe that I'm saying. Yeah, you you are being a venture and addressing him perfectly with uh, perfect etiquette. Yes. All right. Uh, is there is 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 it a significant person, fate wise? Does he seem like a someone who's Threads of destiny are important. Um, you don't have to spend a willpower for this, but I would like you to make the perception and, and enigmas roll. Mm. Okay. Perception plus enigmas. Yep. That's, uh, I think, diff seven per the book. I think. You would think I'd have this memorized by now. Yeah, I actually, yeah, sloppy. I have it written someplace better. Checking. It. Yes, seven. It's enigmas or empathy. Yeah. But but uh, don't have to spend okay. a willpower for this one. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this has no chance of becoming hostile unless you guys make it so. Uh, perception plus empathy. Mm -hmm. Seven. Uh, okay. I can spend willpower on this? You can. I... You don't have to. Normally, you'd mm -hmm. spend a willpower to activate this portion of the of the ability. Mm -hmm. uh, four successes. Mm -hmm. The threads of his fate are coming to an end soon. Oh, Jesus. You uh, sit down, uh, you look at him as uh, introductions are made, and you see the warp and weft of his fate, and you realize that soon um, the uh, threads of his fate are tied off. See, now, what, what does soon mean? Hard to say. Um, probably soon. Mm -hmm. But it, it could be a year, it could be five, but certainly no more than that. Is he an old person? Yes, he is. <clears throat> he's probably 60 by now. 65, maybe. So he's kind of... Uh, he kind of looks like as, as old as this is. Uh, actually, I take that back. He is, in fact, um, 72 right now. Whoa. That's a little, yeah, he's a little older than this. Yeah, he, he is 72. Thanks for accepting our um, meeting. I'm happy to be here to do business with you. As well, uh, my friend is of course on the same page as me. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm old man anymore, and I don't don't get too much more sleep, so. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm glad that somebody else is uh, up at the same hour I'm normally up. Um, his hands are shaking a little bit. You know, he's a little slow drinking his wine, eating his food, but his eyes are sharp and his mind is still razor sharp. Uh, and he say, he looks at you and he says, Decius Varius Tetulianus. Yes, yes. I've heard this name recently. Um, a couple of nights ago, you threw a big party, didn't you? I believe I saw the advertisements for that and heard the criers. Yes, yes, I did. It was a very successful party. Uh, uh, I do believe that many people enjoyed it. 
Yes, you gave a speech about um, ignoring the traditional morality of Rome, didn't you? Well, to some extent, yes, I did. Although it was not necessarily out of believing it, but um, it was more of a returning a favor for a friend. Mm -hmm. Well, enough of that topic. Of course. What uh, what did bring you um, forth so early? I, I, I forgive my uh, uh, rudeness, my brusqueness, but uh, you know my clients will be arriving soon, and uh, I want to devote my morning to them as I am accustomed to doing so. Of course, we will not take a huge uh, part of your time. No worries. We do know that I and my friend know that uh, you hold very beautiful piece of documents relating, and I will say the name of the mm -hmm. uh, play because I don't remember it. Um, and we both are quite interested in paying for it, not necessarily in uh, traditional paying, of course. It's uh, whatever you may ask for as a payment. It doesn't have to be We want to exchange it for something else. Um, all right, uh, give me a second. I'm going to answer um, Nicodemus's questions here. Uh, his psychological weakness. Um, Nicodemus, you see a vision, uh, a running vision, actually, of <clears throat> his accomplishments, his military victories, um, his governorships his political votes, and you receive the overwhelming feelings that he did this um, through his own efforts and that um, through his efforts, uh, the gods uh, favored him and his family, um, that uh, the gods would never betray such uh, strong personal efforts uh, for their honor and for the honor of his family. So the one word answer to that is right there. Um, does he seem fulfilled in the face of his approaching dusk? Uh, he would be happy. Um, you see visions of his children, his extended family, all of them growing up to be successful generals. Um, Many of his uh, extended family uh, going on to found successful subfamilies of their own, and a feeling of satisfaction at this. Uh, third, has he recently faced betrayal? Um, the hovering face of Marcus Livius Drusus appears in your thoughts. And I will remind you that he is the latest Tribune who is going to, as is uh, quite well known, is probably going to propose citizenship for all members of the uh, Italian Peninsula. All right. Um, so back to Decius' um, speech. He says, I know of the um, items of which you speak. They were, I was lucky to have found them. Uh, and have them uh, obtained for me and my family. Uh, the citizens of Athens were glad to gift them to me. Uh, and I treat them as, uh, as such. So, in the face of it was a gift from an entire respected, educated city upon which Rome um, is desirous of uh, good relations. Uh, they gifted this to me and to my family. Why should I be willing to sell it to you? Out of character, this is a very good question. Let's so we'll take a moment to think about it. Even though I'm not there, I suppose the question would be 
is he sincere about that? Mm -hmm. That's true, that's true. Can I make an insight roll to see how sincere he is? In his brain or his desire to be remembered be a good way, a good thing to exploit. Uh, he's actually being very sincere. No roll required. Um, Voice cut there. He, you don't need a roll. He is very sincere. Um, was it a really a gift? Impossible to tell. Maybe he's convinced himself it was a gift. Mm -hmm. But he's being sincere. He's saying that uh, in his eyes, a nation gave this gift to him. Why he should give this gift? So much in I suppose it's possible he doesn't even know who they originally belonged to. I mean, um, that's not on top of the list of things I am considering right now. Uh, okay. Yo, Nicodemus, do you have any input, input at any moment? Trust me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no ideas, though. Some fucking hard question. I mean. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I can I use my get a hint card? Um. <clears throat> You could roll a wits plus politics roll. We're going to call this difficulty eight. How to convince him that it would be better for his family. Hmm. All right. Two successes. You, he has already told you that he knows your reputation. You have given a public speech um, decrying the traditional morals of Rome on a traditional holiday. Therefore, the price has gone way, way up. Um... The things that he would like, his family has a lot of power, he has a lot of power. Um, Nicodemus, you know, um, he, he is a traditional aristocratic Roman. Why would he need Greek? Yeah, you... Uh the, the way to convince him would be to convince him that selling this to you, you have to give him something that makes him look honorable, number one. And you have to promise him in such a way that um, he is 100% confident that you will deliver your price. Um, and it has to be worthy of a gift of, a of Athens. So there, and because Rome looks to Athens as their, um, perhaps the, um, say, uncle of their father, right? They purposely re redrew the Trojan myth uh, to incorporate uh, some stuff from Athens. So they hold Athens in extremely high regard. So any price has to be of extreme honor. A dignity, and you have to convince him of your sincerity. Um, out of character, what about the cloak that Vienna has been given? Yeah, that wouldn't do it. He's not interested in mere money or yeah, fine it's things. Not money. Okay, yeah. I was thinking more about the silk or color of it, the meaning it beholds. I think it's purple. You want to offer him a price he'll accept. I will tell you what he will accept if you guys promise to do it. I was thinking that. 
I will give you the easy answer if you promise to do it. What, what's, what, what's your take? What, think? No, I don't like this. Yes, he, 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 hears the, uh, he hears the encroaching drum of ST Doom approaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take the easy answer first. I mean, mind, the mind is a fast place. I mean, we're just thinking very quickly. I mean, pride, okay, here's the, quick, here's the thing. We are looking for something that provides pride or shows pride and is connected to yeah. that. What things that have pride in it and is also connected to atoms? What kind of things? It oh. doesn't need to be connected to atoms. It, need to, it needs to trump atoms. It needs to be better than it. Certain statues, maybe? Maybe statues. something that is connected to history of atoms, something that we would have. Does any of us in the country have something connected to history of Athens? We do have the copies of the library. Okay. Does that sound as a good thing? Um, that's not going to be good enough. I, I don't think so. It, it's not really better in his eyes than what the things he, he already has. Also, you'd probably have to kill him afterwards because it's got stuff about Perugia in it. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. So these are documents about theater, which is not necessarily the most. Uh, well, one is a document about theater. Demosthenes was famous for his um, philosophy stuff about um, equality and democracy. Okay, so this is about. Maybe. He's a traditionalist, too. Oh, means didn't, didn't Valerius called a an important philosopher from Athens for that philosopher to meet with Nicodemus? Yeah, Demosthenes is famous. I mean, like famous. Okay. Well, I was just thinking if something Valerius, you know, gave Nicodemus with that philosopher, maybe we could do that kind of. Okay, well, here's what he does. He leans forward and he says, I'll tell you what. There is a certain politician who is planning to betray Rome. Now, I'm not telling you to do something to him, but if you were to do something to him to stop him from betraying Rome, I might consider that worthy enough to part with my possessions on the condition that those possessions make their way immediately back to Athens um, as a returning a gift from me that they belong there uh, amongst um, their place of origin. I will look at Nicodemus. Let's look at his face ex expression. See you. Sure. We cannot be seen to this politician. I will return my head to uh, to him, uh, to Marcus, and I will say, "We are listening." He takes a bite, and he was he says. Marcus Livius Drusus. He's a tribune. Italian names are a little hard for me. Through the letters. <clears throat> okay, Marcus Livius. Sir. The tribune. What did he do? Or what will he do? 
he is going to propose citizenship of Rome for every um, every person living on the peninsula, everyone in Italia. That is not Rome. And if something were to happen to him, and I will say kind of with a questioningly, permanently, well, that would be a sad, but just the doing of fate, you say? I am not one to repeat myself. Okay. We will take care of this one way or another. We accept this. Yeah. Wonderful. Enjoy your breakfast. I'm afraid I must... Uh, retreat to prepare for my uh, clients. Of course. Well, we also have things to take care of, so we will have to leave right now as well. Yeah. Um, thanks for hearing us and offering us this video. <clears throat> have a good day. Um, he gets up, he leaves. Men show you the door. The sky is beginning to get light. You're getting sluggish. Um, you, yep, time to get back to your havens. I, you know, I, I hired two. Uh, I don't want to say chariots, but you get the idea. Uh, so they will take us to our havens. I have two separate ones because Nicodemus does not stay in my haven, so he will need to go to his own place. Much obliged. We are covered with the walls of this chariot thing. Protect us from sun if it comes for me. All right, we're going to end it there. Um, two experience points for everybody. Um, so you guys just I agreed to assassinate a Tribune. Awesome. The guys that a few sessions ago would be on the still untouchables. Yep. A few wait, sessions wait, ago, wait. they they were sacrosanct. Beware. Wow. We, we said we'll look into it. Yeah, we will. Yep. We said we will do it one way or another. We didn't say we are going to take care of him. Burning is important. Yep. All right. Um, Next game's next week. Uh, is next week, next Saturday. Um, I immediately put the two experience from this session <laughs> to increase in the group resources. I I considered about any special thing I would like to do next week. Uh, it is not to die. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so Albana, you're making the group resources too. All right. So, I, I want to remind you guys, because I think it kind of slipped your minds. When you have these, I need to make a roll for something, and I need extra contacts, you can tap the group cult contacts. That's what they're there for. You know, you can tap the group herd, you can tap the group resources. That's what that stuff's there for, for everybody who participates to borrow when they need it. I think I think what we're experiencing is like playing, you know, RPG game, and you get like health portions and other kind of. Yeah, portions. I must I must like, uh, hoard it so I never lose. Yeah, 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 like I will I will use it in the future when it gets real necessary, and it gets necessary, but we don't use it because you say the same thing again and again. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, can I increase my expression? Um, I think so. You. Went did a uh, speech tonight. Um, did some stuff. Yeah, I don't see why not. Well, out of curiosity, uh, that with that whole Foesia's experiment thing, I take it that's an ongoing thing. Oh yeah, it's gonna be take a while. Definitely gonna take a while. 
by the way, Chris, huh? would it be possible to say that this use in the nine year time skip trained in his free time with sword like Gladius? With, with his ghoul. I, I plan to buy melee in upcoming sessions. Yeah, I think you could do that. And one, oh, one last thing. Um, when will my resources uh, replenish themselves? Um, not next game, because we're going to pick it up um, almost, not quite immediately, um, we're going to uh, go ahead and skip to um, the 4th and do the ceremony. And then we are going to... Oh, hang on a second. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Is everybody listening? Thank you. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for listening tonight. Um, didn't quite get as much done as I wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to run into the session next week. It's going to be uh, uh, kind of interesting. You're going to see another group cult. Uh, potentially uh, quite bloody and they're going to possibly be involved in sparking a civil war across all of Rome. So, good times. Alright, everybody, good evening. Thanks for listening.